Uh. Fill that void and build a spaceship And since all gold comes from an asteroid This is the great bombardment of large men I'm big fresh, no guess, like I broom the room key I know it, and stare around white like Coonsby A poet in a glass, been a blast It's been a what's in a gas About to doubt you and route to out you ah, But I have nothing to hide Offered a prostitute a ride cause I was feeling obliged What we have is a granddaughter too good for her grandfathers Committed a manslaughter and murdered the hand taught her That bitch called life, that piss poor wife Be here when everything is cool but gone when ain't shit right Jumped in the pool with a cigarette and a stick won't light Diamante, Diamante, Diamante <laughs> Check it out man, download that Chill Withers album man Chill, nah nigga you need to chill Sometimes you gotta let shit happen, even if it's negative Just so you can figure it out. Y'all niggas are suckers, man. You probably got a hell of a dare car collection, don't you? Chill with her. Chill with her. Chill with her. Chill with her. Competitor, man, one of the, one, one of my partners, man. I want y'all to make some noise hey. for Big John. Yeah. I think we OD. Clear the air like some trees. Hey, what's going on, Big John? What's going on, brother? Boom. Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah. tell us what you about to do to your competitor, man. I'm about to stump a mud hole in his confidence, man. Hey. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to beat him down, man. I'm a dominologist. I do this. Hey, man. Tell the world where they can find you. Big Jaw, two G's, B I G G J A H. All platforms: YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, OnlyFans, all that. <laughs> yeah, nigga. Hey, man. Let's roll. Let's get ready to rumble, man. Yeah, let's make it noise. Yeah. All right, our next competitor, man, man, this is one of my close partners, man. Got much love for him. Y'all give it up straight from Marino Valley, Moval, California. Y'all give it up for Lunch the General. Really not into violence. Interpretate the silence as prizes. What's going on, Lunch? What's up, How you doing, man? Chillin, man, yeah. chillin, man. Man, tell these people what you about to do to your competitor. I'm about to hit this nigga with a rock. This big-ass nigga. David and Goliath type of shit. I'm going to rock and hit that nigga with a rock. You know what I'm saying? That, that's right, that's right, man. Tell the world where they can find you. Check me out. Lunch the General. That's Lunch, T-H-A, General. Spotify, Apple Music, IG, and wherever else. Pornhub, too, if it's on that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Check me out. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble! Let's get it! Hey man, rules. Games to 100, 400. All right. If somebody calls bogey, that's 50 points, but you gotta call the bogey if they play bogey. All right. And uh, yeah, games to 100. Let's, go. Let's, Let's rock! Go. Mine's right here. Why? 400. Bam. Let's do it. 
Somebody gotta watch, watch this. I'm yeah. watch the way you do that. I'm like my man, it's my first and last time watching this. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm allergic to the soap around this motherfucker. Let's go. Nigga look like he is. The action is. Nigga, he allergic to soap. Here we go, man. Shut his big ass up. Here we go, man. Here we go. Get the kids at the street, they crying. Big six, to the boat. Yeah, we ain't got it. I don't got it. Big five. We ain't got that either. Big four. Oh, no. Okay. Big three. All right, boy. Don't get no kids. Not yet. We're like working that. on it, though. Setting it up. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Break down, huh? Uh huh. Boom. Oh, I like that. Mm hmm. I like that. Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting knickknack. Oh, oh, Patty White. Patty White. Okay. Give a dog okay. a bone. Give me a job about. Let me get the same thing. Oh, man. Plus five. Ten, ten to five. Ten, ten to five. Attention. Okay, okay. Y'all forget to mention. Oh, my God. Take it. Mm -hmm. He running away. I see it. Serious. Yeah. 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 Serious. 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 Go ahead and do it like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on Yeah, I'm gonna go and get it like that. It's all right, We're gonna get it like that. Boom. Oh, that way. Oh, like wow. Yeah, bring it back there. I'm gonna lay them down like that. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna lay them down like that. Yes, sir. Look at that. Ain't nothing. Wait, right. we're setting it up. The thing? Oh my God. Domino. Oh, 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 my bad, my bad. Oh, man. Strong, nigga, strong. Yeah. 10 more. We got done. 30 to 10. Oh, okay. Y'all got 10, Lush got 30. For right now. For right now. It's lunch. For right now, it's all good. It's lunch. Let's eat. 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 Let's eat.
90 to 20. Oh, yeah. He is kicking your ass to the max. Hey. <laughs> hey, fuck all that, nigga. Ah. Okay. Hey, get up, bro. That shit, man. Let's go, man. Let's go. It's all Let's good. Let's go, baby. Get him up out of here. Oh. Oh, that's oh, yeah, oh, oh, Okay. I'll have to download, man. That's my fucking ass. That's it. Come on. Yes, sir. It's your boy lunch. Y'all know how to get how I'm I get to, it. Yeah. It's lunch. Let's eat. I'm Ow. about to be outside like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all get this big nigga, man. I need 10 niggas to get this big nigga, man. It's your, it's your boy lunch. I you find his mobile, baby. Y'all know how I get down. Let's eat. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure y'all watch and subscribe. If I owe you something, you can get it from God, nigga. God, God, God! <laughs> Don't knock me out like you used to. Are you knocking another bitch out? What bitch are you knocking out? Why don't you knock me out no more? Now we in counseling because I... They didn't call the police. They called my mama. My mama uh. came up there, cussed my daddy out. What the fuck? Da -da -da, you got them in this car? Da -da -da. I guess it's only a crime if you like in a car seat or something. Oh, yeah. oh, if you young. Yeah. But That's nigga. Wait, if my you, daddy. How old was he? I was like, we, oh, oh, was we live on? Yeah. Eight. Oh, okay. So I you was old enough to open the door if. if like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to. <laughs> it wasn't hot, though? No, it was hot. Welcome to Craig Facts. <laughs> what up? We live in effect, man. We in this bitch. Y'all give it up for Brandon. Brandon made it back, man. Yes, sir. Give it up man. for the good yeah. foot. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? How you feeling? I feel I feel great. Hey, somebody said uh, in the comment, they said, oh, Brandon's been gone for three weeks. What, what are you mad about Craig at this time? <laughs> 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 that nigga Craig. <laughs> I got a torn Achilles, people. Come on, man. That's Brandon was one of the dopest niggas I know, man. Did you tell a story on what happened? How you hurt yourself? I think it was yeah. He got crossed yeah. by, he got crossed over by a girl. No, I, I did, I did, uh, when we were at the other, the other studio. For, at that time, but oh, okay, you did. Yeah, we went hooped, popped the Kiwi, so I can't, I can't make it all the time. Like when I take the Norcos, takes you out. You know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I told my driver, so I can't drive. I'm not going to just pass out on on air. That's why you got to start smoking weed, man. Nah, nah, no, no, you saw me when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> that edible now. What's my doctor name? <laughs> also, man, it's is Dewan's birthday. Man. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! That nigga, that nigga blow out the candles and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> he don't look, look, look at the edible candles? <laughs> <laughs> edible candle, he about to have a nigga bust out his birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga, this nigga Brandon tackled a crocodile in that hat. <laughs> Put him in a Melvin chokehold. Happy birthday, man. Oh, we appreciate it. A, a, a shot for, for, for your birthday? Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's your birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me pour this wine over here. Now, usually I don't do this. Hey. Let me get the head of you, bro. Yeah, I'll do. There you go. Happy birthday, man. Keep the party going. Yeah. yeah. Don't know if I'm all wear off by the time the show ends. <laughs> well, we don't want show drinking. He's going to be shirtless by the time the show ends. <laughs> uh, yeah, y'all see that nigga is up there uh, with the water hose on the nigga back? I wish I didn't see it, man. Yeah, look at that. I didn't see that. Don't have to tie you on your show then. <laughs> you good? Tired of nothing in here, so it, it, ain't no, it ain't no tension in the room. How <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gonna tell these niggas you're not coming, but tell me, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it, hey, 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 it sucks when they don't tell you what's going on, huh? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for everything. I appreciate it. Chat, 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 but Quentin, man. Hey! hey. God damn it. Hell yeah. That shit. Man, it's this nigga's birthday. How old are you? 40, nigga. Okay. This shit feel weird. I'm 40, god damn it. Like, god damn, this shit feel weird. Because I'm the youngest in the family. So it's if you're like, god damn, 40 Other feel than old. Brown, you the oldest here, huh? Huh? You the oldest in the crew. But I mean, we all close in yeah. age, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm 40. <laughs> oh, never mind. Yeah, it's your young ass up, nigga. You just look like you 40. Yeah. 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 Nigga. nigga, you just look 51, yeah, right. nigga. I feel you, nigga. You was in a disorder at least 20 years ago. <laughs> this nigga. Oh, man. This nigga <laughs> show. <laughs> this nigga showed up like a retired electrician. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> nigga, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nigga, nigga, nigga oh, no, Wiz. Charlie. We, I forgot Charlie. Oh, yeah, Charlie the oldest. Oh, yeah, Charlie four years older than us. He, he and it, and he's older. four years older than his voice is like 50 years older. And he's trying to dress like in the 90s. <laughs> Damn. So, uh, do you celebrate your birthday? Do you like celebrate it, or you just? I don't give a shit, honestly. You know, what I mean, me and the wife gonna be chilling. That's all that matter. Me and the wife when get shit with. Nigga, you, when you married to your best friend, nigga, every day feel like your birthday. Honestly, hey, I don't really shit. tripping. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking forward to Saturday. Me and the wife going to wine country. That's the fuck I'm hey. looking for. Nigga, that's what I'm looking forward to. Outside of that, nigga, I'll be chilling. So, so the idea of birthdays is a pagan idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. There was a point in history where Christians didn't celebrate their birthday mm -hmm. because they figured it was like a paganistic thing. And over time, people adapted and that became custom. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to all the Christians. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Every time you celebrate your birthday, you're celebrating a pagan holiday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, the idea of blowing out candles came from the Greeks. Oh, it did? Yeah, Preach. so basically Preach. what would happen is they they did not see the point. They considered it bad luck to celebrate holidays and mm -hmm. shit because they felt like that invited, you know what I'm saying, evil spirits. So they would light candles to keep spirits away. So eventually they started. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people don't know that's the history of the birthday, man. I think the, the Greeks was always blowing some shit. God damn. Yeah, they were. The Greeks was, you know, they yeah, did some no. progressive things, but they was foul as fuck. Yeah. So what um what you got planned for the birthday with the wife? Y'all gonna go? Y'all gonna go to wine country and then what? Nigga, that's it. That's all. That's it. I ain't, man, nigga, I'm forty. God damn it. <laughs> I ain't got time to be celebrating my shit like I was a sweet 16, nigga. That's some young shit. I feel I'm like, yeah, nah, nah. I'm, like, I feel like I'm just getting started, honestly, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Brandon, what did you do for your birthday this year? I was in Vegas. Oh, yeah, you went to Vegas. Okay. Damn. All right. I'm always in Vegas, man. I don't remember what yeah. I did for my birthday. I don't think I did shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm kicking it with you niggas for my birthday, goddamn. And I appreciate that, man. You know, real, man. I really appreciate it, man. Um... So we're going to go into something, man, because we were halfway through that, that Kev interview. I know Brandon has questions. I know how he works. So when he shows up, he got some, he got some, he's done some research, and I know he has some great questions, man. So we're going we're gonna to pick up where we left off. The last episode, to be continued, we left continue. off at Deuces, hey. right? Um, we left off at Deuces. Deuces was a hit. Kev, you signed the publishing deal, publishing deal for 50 k you, you feel like you should have waited to sign it because you fucked yourself out of a few million dollars. Man. Okay, so Deuces hits. And what does... What what, what happens what happens after Deuces? Like, how was the relationship with you and Chris Brown after Deuces? He signs you, he trusts you. Like, where's the, where's the status of you guys' relationship after that becomes a hit and everybody is recognizing you as that nigga? I was always looked at as, like, the help. You feel me? Like, mm. I never felt like I was in the family. So I always felt like I was a... Uh, you know, I pledged before, so I, I took that type of mentality in there, and it's it's really helpful because if you always a servant, you can get anywhere. Right. Like even the way I got in contact with you, I was like, man, let me make some beats for you, right for you. Like, right. People I admire, I try to serve them first. Right. Mm -hmm. To get whatever I'm wherever I'm trying to get. Right. That right. sounded weak as fuck. Like no, I'm trying no, to scam. No, 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 that's some real shit. But um. What was the question again? Because this Henny is kicking in. Nah, that's all yeah. good. So, so Deuces drop, you on, you on a high. Right. You like everything. Okay, I met Chris Brown. I built a relationship because I remember you said it was a year before you even started pitching shit to him. Right. You was just around, right. playing the background, learning the game, right? Yeah. And yeah. then you get your opportunity to get in the studio with him by yourself and you drop Strip. Well, oh. No, no, no. We dropped uh, the In My Zone mixtape. In My Zone. Which okay. had no BS on it, but then we ended up doing Deuces when he linked up with Tiger. When he linked up that with Tiger. That same year. Y'all yeah. was in Virginia when y'all did that, right? Yep. So, yep. You, so, so I, I don't know how you, I don't know how it works with you guys, but when you hit a lick, right? like the Chris Brown lick, you start somewhere and then you end up at the lick. And that journey in between is a motherfucker. Man. And when you finally hit the lick, it's very gratifying. And very few people can understand 
what it feels like to hit the lick because they don't stick around long enough to hit the lick. They don't because they want the mm-hmm. lick to do what they think the lick should do. Yeah. But in reality, the lick is gonna do what the lick does. So you get to the lick, you're like, "Fuck! I done been through all this bullshit. I dealt with the gay sugary nigga with the sugary basketball right. move." <laughs> you feel me? It's always niggas along the journey. I dealt with that. Pops unplugged the uh, the, the Triton, Damn. lost all my music, Man. dropped out of college, got left for the tamale dude, got left for the tamale, tamale. dude, tamale dude. <laughs> All these things happen along the way to the lick. Everybody has a story about their journey. The lick never happens the way you see it in your head. Fact. It happens oh. the way it wants to happen. Yeah, dude. So you hit the lick. You up now. Now it's obvious to the world that this is a nigga that we need to be fucking with. How did that feel? It's interesting, man. Everybody changed. My parents changed. Hmm. You know, I was used to going to my dad and asking him for money. Right. And... You know, I remember my dad had a gambling problem. So the only, the one thing I, the only reason I don't gamble, I don't shoot dice, I don't do any of that because my favorite house in Hawthorne, we lost it because my, my mama told me too much info. Right. Moms out there, don't, don't confide in your sons like it's your therapist. Real talk. If it's a child, keep your relationship. I knew too much. Right, right. So when I found out my dad lost the crib from gambling at the Normandy Casino, I'm like, damn, I ain't never gambling. I ain't never shoot dice, none of that. You know, I was scared. So uh, bring me back to what I was talking about. Help me, Craig. Okay, no, we we here. We here. So you hit the lake, you up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now the dynamic. My dad started asking for money, right? Oh, yeah. So I remember uh, getting my ass beat real bad. This is my last ass whooping was when I was in that. Seventh grade. Right. <laughs> he said, Don't let nobody ride my bike. I'm like, cool. I'ma let the homie ride my white I mean my home my white homeboy, I let him ride my mom's bike. Right. Like, you said you said don't let nobody ride your bike. Right. He had a hard ass little mountain bike he got from the Slauson Swap Meet. So I'm riding his bike, the white homeboy ride my mom's bike. My dad see me, he's like, What the f he said, nigga, what did I tell he didn't say nigga. Yeah. My dad don't curse. So he say shit like bump that and that jump. Bump that. He's like bump that jump. That sound like take. some nineties. <laughs> Man, bump that jump. Hey, but it's he beat always my ass. Though, when when niggas don't cuss but they do other evil. Yeah, right, right, right. I got uncle don't cuss but he cheat on his wife. Always the new bitch. This, this, this make up for me not cussing. <laughs> He'll pull you to the side if you cuss. It'll don't and don't say nigga around me, <laughs> mother sucker. Mother sucker. Like a movie. Yeah. Mother sucker. Get that jive out my face. <laughs> That's it's always a weird dynamic. He didn't so, drink. He didn't drink nothing. Smoke. He didn't curse. He worked at a group home in Pasadena called uh, Optimus Youth Home. Oh, okay. I know exactly. Yeah, Optimus. yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up my whole life with my dad working with them. So anyway, he beat the shit out of me. Nah, it wasn't that bad. Okay. Just a little ass yeah. whooping. I felt like the nigga even, this is the first time he made me pull my shit down, which he don't even get down yeah. with, and that yeah. shit hurt. Yeah. Right, right, right. With my ass, I'm like, my nigga, I didn't deserve that one. That's why when he unplugged the shit, I'm like, you got an ass whooping coming from you. For you. <laughs> so, how old were you? Seventh grade. I was in the seventh grade. Oh, okay. okay. It's my white homeboy riding my mama bike. So, you fast forward to when deuces and stuff happened, my dad never really supported my career, but he did because he got me to Triton in college. He right. said, hey, you want a car? I'm gonna get you this. You want a whip or you want a you want a, a keyboard? Right. I said I'm, I walk every. I walk all over campus. Give me a keyboard. That's how I got the skills I got. Right. But fast forward, he kind of kicked me out the house for pursuing music over the NFL. Right. So then when the music shit start popping, I didn't tell my parents I was working with Chris Brown and doing this and that and the other. I let them see the video first. Right. Oh. And I wanted my success to kind of. I kind of hated that I went this way because. I never developed that relationship back with my parents. I'm still always trying to prove them wrong. Like you, you think you know the way, but mm. you never, you never wanted to, you know, invest in me in music like I thought you should at the time. Mm. But look what I did. So I bought a Range Rover. I ended up buying a Range Rover 2012. Right. My dad liked to go to Vegas for this bowling tournament. Him and my mother was in a bowling tournament since I was eight years old. Right. Southwest Bowl, <laughs> Gage Bowl. Yes. Yeah, so. If you bowl, you, you, you probably know my parents. You know. Uh, Cowboy Carson So they used to go to Vegas And my mother She's not really a gambler Or a bowler But her husband Was spending so much time At this bowling alley Every night I've been there every night I, I used to be able to sleep To the sound of 
Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can sleep through that. It's it's like so. She's like, well, I'm not gonna lose my husband to these bitches and this bowling and shit. So yeah. she was in the league. So he's like, hey, my nigga, let me um, let me borrow the Range Rover. Let me take it to Vegas since you're going to Australia for two weeks. Let me take the Range Rover. I'm like, I'm thinking about when he beat my ass. With the bike. <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, this ain't yours. <laughs> I was like, he had a, I helped him buy a, a, a what he had a, a 300. What's some Chrysler 300? Chrysler 300, yeah. I helped him get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nigga, take your Chrysler 300. <laughs> nigga, take your Chrysler 300 to Vegas. Yeah. You, you beat my ass when I let Kyle ride the bike. I worked for this. Damn, okay, so. Damn, it's cracking in the hood yeah, right now. Man. What's going on outside? Yeah, I kind of so got me. The Asian man shot. just banged on me because I called this pastor. Uh, I don't want to give up. <laughs> <laughs> I called this one of the Dinas. Hey, 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 and hey, he was hey, like, hey, no, hey, you hey, lied to your girlfriend on phone. Call her back. Call her back. Call her back. Call her back. So one thing that's really hard, right? I think that's why being an athlete prepared me for entertainment, right? Because I've dealt with adversity. Adversity my whole fucking life and and have overcome most of the adversity and became really great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And in entertainment, it's impossible to be in entertainment without some adversity. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's impossible. This this is a field where if you decide you wanna do this, you're gonna lose some shit that you can't get back along the way. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't understand what it takes to get to this particular point, um, which is why I'm bringing this up because Kev put himself in a position where he could buy a range, right? Sure. So when you start to do things that are exceeding the value of what everybody else thinks you're worth, then they start to want to borrow those things that are more valuable than they perceived you to be. Come on, and they think they, 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 think they deserve it. They, they think they deserve it. it. Like, how do you tell a nigga that knew you when you yeah. didn't have a car... That you can't borrow the Range Rover mm. without seeming like a hater, because nigga, you can't afford to pay for the Range Rover if something happens to the Range Rover. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, you didn't let pops use the Range Rover, or you did? I didn't. I didn't. I kind of wish I did. You know what I'm that saying? That caused conflict. I wish I did. I just wanted to teach him a lesson at one time, but <laughs> <laughs> the nigga gave me my name. That's your yeah. lesson, <laughs> Wait, so you, so you didn't let you didn't let him use it? You use your range over, but you got I gave him now. lots of money to, you know, do his thing. And I, I did lots of things for him. Whenever he asked for it, I would give him. But that asking for the range and you got a car, you don't need it. What are you trying to show off for, you know? Right. Yeah, you married with multiple kids, nigga. You don't need to be clowning. <laughs> you know? Trying to show off for his side hose. So what's the most money? <laughs> what's the most money somebody ever asked you to borrow after they figured you blew up? <laughs> My pops, he asked me to get like 20 racks one time. 20,000? Damn. Just, ain't, just, no just little, ain't no little ask. Uh, I, I really can't think of a, Oh, no, 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 no. One time, after I was kind of falling out with, you know, once I started getting my own studio and stuff, the labels and stuff stopped fucking with me. Right. CB kind of stopped calling me because um, in Europe and stuff, they would be... It's cracking. It's cracking. It's right cracking now. outside. God damn. I'm sorry, y'all. Siren after siren. Somebody must have got popped. And these are police sirens. These are the ambulance yeah, sirens. These are the, the police. Yeah, somebody must have got popped. It's very distracting. I'm sorry. That's why we keep getting distracted. Right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's the big mall. Something going on. <laughs> that's the uh, Nigga, SWAT. That's a SWAT tank. <laughs> <laughs> they about to yeah. use that shit that they did on Easy and NWA. Oh, yeah. 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 They looking for a nigga that looked like show. But after some success. <laughs> nigga, every time you get hungry, nigga, siren go off. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, hey. Sorry, nigga, that's not hey, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. That's a good one, bad news, Brown. You just want to send this nigga hell for gluttony, man. That nigga came with bags. Yeah. That nigga just showed it like a model for Donkey Kong. That nigga show groped the nigga and left a wet spot on his nah, dick. Nigga, <laughs> nigga stupid nigga. Ah, nigga. That nigga, that nigga got an old Chapo members only shirt, nigga. That nigga got a poncho. <laughs> 
nigga think he buff, nigga. Uh, that nigga got his hair cut at the back of a barber college, nigga. <laughs> 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 that nigga got his hair cut at the back of a barber college, nigga. In the back, nigga. Nigga still practicing on that nigga hairline, nigga. Smile. Nigga, <laughs> hey, hey, you ain't got hey, fuck hey, your bottom rolls fuck. better than you. Nigga, you ain't got the best. Hey, you Shut your meat nigga. mouth ass up. <laughs> Shut your cold nigga. cut mouth ass up. Hey, 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 nigga, bottom, you, your bottom roll ain't, hey, you ain't got the best dinner plan, my nigga. <laughs> that nigga ain't got the best insurance. <laughs> I hate your barber, nigga. That's true, though. He said, smile. That nigga said, smile. That nigga said, smile. <laughs> nigga, your wow. teeth do look like chip dominoes, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, your fat ass eat dominoes, nigga. Domino of chips, course, nigga. Of course, of course. We yeah, all do. Nigga. We all do. Nigga, fat nigga. nigga. mouth look like he should be barking. And nigga, you <laughs> stupid, nigga. That nigga stupid, nigga. <laughs> That nigga look like he put his head in Malcolm X toilet after the perm. <laughs> Police hit a raid, he took his perm out, nigga. Yeah, oh, shit. Man, nigga got a 10 steps to a perm, he only followed yeah, one in five. He, he wanna be able to give me. It ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> nigga stupid, nigga. Oh, nigga. oh shit, nigga. You nigga got a onesie shit. on under that shirt. Oh. <laughs> there you go, nigga. <laughs> 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 He's hey, shooting today. Hey, he tried. Show it here going for 50. He's going for 50 today, bro. He's going for 50 today. Shoot it. Just get back to the interview, nigga. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? That nigga shot. Retarded ass nigga. Fuck you, stupid. Stupid. That nigga mad tired in here. Oh, yeah, man. No, man. I forgot what I was going to ask, nigga. He was at a... The, the dad in the, the car, the late Range Rover. Our shit that. changed after, you know, if you if you have success overnight and you ain't ready for it, you would be chasing that. You know, I got a Grammy on my first placement, so I've been chasing that. <laughs> was that R. Kelly? <laughs> I thought it was Mutant R. Kelly. That nigga had a Destiny's Child ringtone. <laughs> that was not. <laughs> Nah, I'm trying to remember who do that. <laughs> oh, Maxwell. That's Maxwell. <laughs> Childish, yeah. Uh, uh, this yeah, is America. Uh, this is America. Very Maxwellish. Okay, so you said, what, what was we at, Kev? I was just saying, like, when you chase those, becoming a celebrity overnight, you know what I'm saying? Like right. Twister was singing about. It's really detrimental. It's really crazy because you have to learn the industry and the business in reverse. Right. You, you have this mm. hit and it's doing well, but you don't really know how everything is where the money is allocated to and how everything breaks down. Mm -hmm. Every country, you don't understand. You don't understand how royalties work or the pie or, you know, you don't understand none of that. So I had to learn it while the shit was popping in. I was broke for two years. Right, right. So you say you got a, you got a Grammy on the first placement. Right. And, and, and the way I understand Grammys to work is there's a committee. Right. Right. So Beyonce dad is on that committee. Right. When you're on that committee, you can vote. When you have enough people in your corner to vote for what you're saying, you can say, hey, Beyonce said Viva Loca right here, so she should get a Grammy for Latin. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Yeah, so that's how people really win. So even though we got Grammy nominated, I learned the politics of that, that, you know, you could get nominated, and that can change your life. Once you say Grammy-nominated right. artist, right. it changes your career forever, from what I was told. Mm -hmm. But also it was just like, what does that really mean? Like, just because you Grammy nominated, does that mean you're not talented? Does, mean, does that mean you're not skilled at what you do? Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're not singing something that actually changes people's lives and, and help them? You know, so I learned it was just a scam, just like in football. Yeah, it's just a scam like a motherfucker. Man, yeah. most definitely. So how did that change the kind of phone calls and people that were approaching you after you got Grammy nominated? I, I didn't recognize for a long time. I was very easy to get used. I was very gullible. Uh, not necessarily by women, but, you know, like you said, you could play off the ego. If you said I was mm -hmm. so dope, you know, maybe it would be a spot for you. But I really wanted my cousins around. I wanted um, my cousin CJ around and my cousin Ronnie, but they was cripping real hard at the time mm. on the east side. Um, so, luckily, I found another CJ, um, which was my frat brother at right. Dominguez Hills. If anybody know anything about the, the Dominguez Hills uh, Q-Dogs, they called the gangster cues. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. worldwide they known as the gangster cues. So it's a lot of niggas from the hood that got that street mentality like pop, but they educated. Yeah. yeah. And they're willing to 
finish what they start. So that's the type of niggas I started hanging with, and I met a dude named uh, CJ. He saw me singing to girls all the time after the little frat shows, and I'd be singing, and I'd be giving out my CD free. He was like, hey, check it out, man. What if you sold that for like $10, right? What if you bought 100 CDs for $10, and you sold it for 10 You make a $90 profit. I might have did the math wrong. But he basically showed me, stop soliciting yourself like a like a hope you right, know right, right, right. make some money off of what you're doing because it's good enough people will pay for it and mm -hmm. sure enough i start going to dominguez the first song i had with chris brown which was twitter right i start selling it and people was buying it when did baby mama come into the picture baby mama came into the picture very well after the deuces um i was broke for two years right so i was sleeping on my grandmother couch and finally they said bro you got enough money to you know, stay in North Hollywood or somewhere else where people are at. Right. So I ended up moving there, um, and it was that was one of the selling oh, wait, points. That's hilarious. Yeah, in North Hollywood, one of the selling points was like, oh, David Banner <laughs> lives here, uh, Eva Marcel lives here. They would right. name people, uh, the famous Jet Jackson. So you had money, you were still sleeping on somebody's couch. Yeah, because um, I didn't understand the concept of money. Right. When I went to Washington State, rent was three hundred dollars. Right. A yeah. month. So coming out here I didn't really get it you know and, and when I worked at Amber Crombie I don't know if I told you I worked at Amber Crombie no yeah it was seasonal they make a nigga stand out there with a, a wife beater and shit <laughs> and oil and shit right and uh but they wasn't giving me enough to make rent for Washington right you know but it was enough to get gas money to go rock with Chris Brown right right right, right. so I remember quitting on them I'm, I'm, I'm telling them like I work with Chris Brown and they used to treat me like shit my manager was a fine ass chick from Hawaii, right. and I remember telling him. And then when the shit came out, I finally quit, and I came back out there was popping, and they was all trying to dick ride. And, right, right, right. But a lot of people treated me like I was, I was lying about it. So when, it, <laughs> when everything happened, I didn't necessarily want to prove people wrong, but I was trying to watch my back. Mm -hmm. Right. So by the time I I moved to North Hollywood, I had a Dodge Magnum, two thousand eight. So this gave you the year that it is too. Right, right, you know, right. dudes, this happened in 2010. I got a car from two years ago. Right, right, right. So when I was riding the Magnum and pulling up to the apartment, Eva wasn't saying nothing. She had a boyfriend, but she wasn't really waving <laughs> nothing like that. The checks start coming in from Deuces about three years. It take about three years for the real checks to come in. Right. And the album came out and everything started coming in. I got the Range Rover. She just waving, breaking her neck every time I have right. to pass by right. her parking spot. But I saw I'm still like, ah, I ain't fucking with you. Chris Brown's best friend was a stylist named EJ. You think she used you? I, basically, what I'm getting at, I felt like I was wondering if she was using me. <laughs> well, no, nah, I mean, if you, if, if you feel like... I was always wondering because when I started dating the chick, man, she was like... You know, I'm only fucking with you because my boyfriend cheated. Whoop -de -whoop -whoop. That's what she told you. That's what she told me. Mm. The same girl that said her boyfriend cheated said I fucked her. And she, I ain't even fuck with the chick. It's right. a chick that's a, a and r uh, assistant for Ray J. Right. Her name's Morgan Hardiman. Never fucked her. Never even hang, hung with her like that. She used right. to hook me up with, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of Ray J for whatever reason. Right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, I, I fuck with Ray J because that's where I get a lot of my style from. So she was his assistant, so I fucked with her in that in that capacity, but she went and lied to my baby mama or my babysitter or something and said I fucked her. This is after me and my baby mama broke up. Right. So I'm just fast forwarding that the same guy that my baby mama broke up with, uh, this lady was the reason they broke up. He fucked her. Right, right. So then Eva started fucking with me. What happened was I came to a birthday party. You think you ever really trusted Eva? I never trusted her. Mm -hmm. Because I went through her dating line. Right. I went through her. That's mine? Yeah, nigga. I Our shit look just the same. Yeah, exactly. Go show still in the I got a story. <laughs> <laughs> I got a story about that. Yeah. I got a story about when like, Chris yeah, Brown. I ain't verified, nigga. What is this? Stupid as fuck. Yeah, you went on my Instagram? Yeah, on well, accident. God damn. Oh, accident. Ah, damn. Bravo. <laughs> You better check your phone. This shit gonna smell like dookie fingers. <laughs> hey, fuck you, fat boy. That nigga walking diabetes. That, that fat nigga look like the uh the ghost uh, on the snow. Uh, uh, <laughs> that should be the hilarious shit. He but, running out of shit. He running. He running out. Of he don't even understand. It's a long fight, nigga. It's a long. Over in. I'm gonna just like your barber in your hairline, nigga. It's always long. <laughs> Amber 
Damn, nigga. We talking to a Damn, nigga. We talking to an important nigga. Nigga, 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 and that's big. Like, you can't really fuck with nobody if you don't trust them, bro. Right. And it could be to your detriment. You know, you got to trust yourself. It's always going to blow up in your face. Because a lot of yeah. times, look, there's, there's so many different ways. of There's so many different levels to distrust. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, a lot of times, people think you owe it to them to earn their trust. Mm. And it's like if you in a, if you in a situation where you may be a little bit more advanced than somebody, if you're dealing with a female who may not have been through as much as you went through, yeah. a lot of times it, it the ego won't let people humble themselves and learn from a motherfucker. They think that the person that's more advanced has to slow down and turn around and grab them and teach them the way. And a lot of times I've been in situations even dealing with Corey. He never turned back and grabbed me and said, "This is what you do, nigga." Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? In this industry, that's not what people do. If you right. really want something, you get around a motherfucker, you, you become humble, you learn, I seen and then you bring something to the table. Right, but don't yeah. expect a motherfucker, male or female, to turn around and coddle you into understanding what's going on. Because in the entertainment industry, specifically, it ain't it's, it just ain't how it's, it don't, it's not how it works. Bro. And, and shit, coming so, shit, shit coming so fast and so quick, niggas really ain't got time to turn around and... and, and, and uh, and do that shit for you. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you'll you see somebody that's perceived on top of you. And you see it from your own, your point of view. But you don't understand what the shit that they deal with on their end. Man, there's so many levels to this shit, bro. That it, it's just impossible to explain to somebody if they're only experiencing one aspect of it. Like if show is just a rapper, it would be impossible for me to understand, uh, explain to him what... B would be going through if B was an entertainment lawyer, mm -hmm. right. or if, if if Brandon was a motherfucking uh, a, a motherfucking uh, a, a manager of a venue, mm -hmm. yeah. Or you know what I'm saying? There's so many different elements, and at the point that we are at in our career, we have to deal with all those elements and develop an understanding along the way. I wish I wish a motherfucker would have sat down and broke each element of the game to me down and be like, nigga, this is how you do it and this is who you. But it, it just ain't how it work, man. I've been failing forward. Yeah. Right. So if you're around somebody that won't let you fail forward, fuck them. Because once they, once you, because once they realize that shit ain't perfect, the time that you are spending trying to explain to them how this shit goes, you lose an opportunity. Yeah. You gotta be around motherfuckers that trust you to do the right thing. If they don't trust you to do the right, right. thing, you just gotta keep it moving mm -hmm. until they realize, hey, it's 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 the only love mm -hmm. is progress. But also, Kevin, I think it's important too. So you, you did talk about that. You said you never you never trusted. And obviously, you had a public like breakup and everything like that. And we're gonna get into that. But explain to the public how you can manage to still be in a relationship, not trusting the person every day in and out. Because to some people, that may not make sense. Like, how do you not trust somebody, but then you have a child? Right. And this and that. So can you I explain where you, how you, your thought process going into that, not trusting somebody every single day? Well, sometimes people confuse their own insecurities with not trusting somebody. And that's mm -hmm. what I was trying to get at. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of insecurities. Because I feel like no matter what stage a woman is in, if you're a man that's um, operating in your full potential, you can save a woman. The reason I believe that is... A, a celebrity woman, a chick that, you know, hollered at me at one time. Everybody knew her as this bad girl, Megan Good, right? Mm -hmm. So Megan Good had hit up CB people, and she's like, oh, I want to hang out with Kevin McCall, da, da, da. Set it up. We was hanging out one night. She came home. She came in from, from out of town, hung out with me. I saw a lot of wild shit. That's not my business to tell, but I, uh... <laughs> This is before she settled down with the church. With Devon. This is before Devon. <laughs> this is before Devon Franklin, who who I'm also friends with. But at the end of the night, when I went to her home, she was talking about God, and she was talking about how people always judge her for the things that she do and the things that she's been through. And I was just like, damn, I ain't a nigga that can save you because I'm really just trying to seal the deal tonight. You it's feel me? So when I, seen, when I seen the progress she made with her husband, I'm like, oh, just because a girl is – at this stage in her life, it don't mean a real nigga can't. Y'all call it Captain Save a Ho, but I'm talking about a nigga that really rebuild a girl, give her foundation, give her, you know, right. uh, 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 
You know, when you have a, a routine and structure, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's not that she was a hoe or this and that. It's that nigga came back. You couldn't handle it. You couldn't get her right. Right, right, right. So then when I was dealing with Eva, she used to show me this. You know, we used to watch Pimps Up, Holes Down. and right. So I'm like, why are you showing me this pimp shit? It's funny. She would put it on. Yeah, we like the, we both <laughs> we, we both enjoyed that. Like, people don't know. Eva is from 83rd and Western. She went oh, to yeah, Washington Prep. Yeah. Her brother's from A Trey. Like Eva yeah. is a real South Central trick. So did I say trick? No, you said chick. Chick. He said trick. He said trick. He said trick. He meant to say chick. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. We gonna clean up for you. You know how many niggas I had to knock out for saying, "Yeah, that bitch." I'm like, "Hey, my nigga, I could call her that, but just knock it off." It's 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 tank. What's your definition of trust? Trust. Because I think some people... I got a girl I can trust now. Right. How you know you can trust her? Uh, Because I done fucked up and she did the right thing. Mm. Uh, that's you, a good answer. I done fucked yeah. up and she could have... So is trust what got you... Got me up out of is here. Is trust what you do or is it what you don't do? Ooh. Mm-hmm. It's Cause both. Because a lot of people got it misconstrued. They think that they think they can trust a motherfucker because of what that's they're... That's a good question. Not doing based on what they want them to do. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that trust is really acceptance, bro. It has nothing to do, in my opinion. I'm not saying I'm uh, right. Uh, it has nothing to, to do with with a per, with, with what a person is not doing. It's whether you it's whether you're willing to accept them, regardless of what they do or or what they don't do. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's my definition. What's your definition of trust, Brandon? Well, I mean, it depends. Like, I think there's. There's 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 maturation process and trust too. Like certain things that you can trust me now, you couldn't have trusted me this shit when I was mm. like 21, 22. You know what I'm saying? There's no way. So that that's why I was wanting to know with you when you were saying you didn't trust her, but then you alluded to that you just you just weren't prepared mm-hmm. for it. Was it because at if you were too young to 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 carry certain information without acting a certain way or? I'm just trying to understand what you what you mean, where you mean by that. Because I'm thinking it's, it's more of an age factor. It was a learning curve, mm-hmm. I believe. I believe my baby mother is extremely advanced. I believe the thing she... took she advantage f- of you. N- nah, it wasn't like... Is she older than you? She only one year older. But she she had money longer than you. Yes, definitely. I used to watch her when I was in college. I used to watch Top Model. And she's from 83rd and Western? She's from, <laughs> she from my hood. And her brother's from 8th <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Her you older brother? Younger brother. Okay. Her baby brother. It's possible for women to take advantage of men. I don't know why yeah. people don't accept I don't know why they don't get especially it. Especially when women, men and women are the same age. Especially a bad chick. Like, she a bad, she's a beautiful woman. So, she been having boss niggas holler at she her. She been dating drug dealers. I went through, like, the last five of her boyfriends. And, and even her wife. Who... Her wife. Me and her had both slept with her ex-wife. Okay. Oh, she which, got married to... Okay. She got married to a woman. Right. And I had slept with that woman. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. Uh, it's dope. It's very dope because it was my one up. I was like, yeah. But anyway, uh, the la- I was like, in a relationship, I started getting scared because I started feeling like, you know, I never had money my whole life. What if I lose this shit? I know I got the talent now, but do you like me for the money? Do you like me for- What if I lose it? How you going to act? Right. So I started being real insecure about the shit. It kind of, I kind of, the law of attraction, I attracted the shit. Right. She was like, I know I had boyfriends from the BMF or this and that. I didn't know they was I didn't know they was drug dealers. I didn't know the last five of my boyfriends was drug dealers. But you can I say some controversial shit though? When, when a woman starts sleeping with a woman, that changes the type of woman she is. Because now she has the energy of another woman in her. So now I feel like they become competition for men. If that makes sense. Like they what? Like, they're looking at you like, they, they, I think some women will look at you when they mess with women like, like, I could treat a woman better than you can. I could do, I could do. No, that's, yeah, oh yeah. You feel me? Like, I, why would I be with this nigga if, he, if he's that's not even man. treating me as good as I would treat another woman? Mm-hmm. Like, you you know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's, I don't know if that makes sense, but I just feel no, like it changed. That way, it because they thoughtful. A lot of, a lot of studs and stuff, they thoughtful. They know that. In the, in the, this industry, there's a lot of dudes that's not used to pussy. <laughs> And this is a fact. Right. There's a lot of and dudes are not used to pussy. So a world. lot of dudes in this in this world, but in this industry, a lot of dudes aren't used to pussy. Like you probably used to pussy coming up. So with her, 
this is a regular thing. Did they ever try to make it seem like you were in a privileged position? Because I, I've, I've been there where dudes would be like, oh, you're lucky. And I'm looking at them like, oh, y'all not used to bitches. You're not used to, no, and no disrespect. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not giving names, get but you, you, get you get what I'm saying? And like, a lot of niggas with money, I start noticing, like, even being around Chris Brown, I was like, dang, he didn't get to have that experience to be able to. You know, we've been we we athletes and stuff. We went through high school, college. Some of us have college, so we got that jock kind of spirit. We know how to talk to women and actually have a conversation yeah. or laugh yeah. them up out of their panties. Yeah. And I got to sit and see, like, damn, you don't really know how to talk to girls and interact with them because right. you didn't have that experience. Because so they will they will make you feel like they who will make they? you clarify who they. What I mean by rich like, niggas. okay, like rich, when you come into this industry, we in comedy, right? So when you bring up a woman into this game that's of high standard to them mm -hmm. they'll make you feel like you're in a privileged position like so, so like she's industry mm -hmm. she was industry so they make it seem why like you're saying this he's speaking well, from experience I, okay. i'm married i i was married to a comedian i was i was divorced from a, a woman comedian. a woman a speaking. woman yeah 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 <laughs> i mean clearly nigga come on <laughs> you're a comedian nigga. Me, well a, a woman and i'm oh married God. to a comedian now so so now he only fuck with funny bitches. Only yeah, I, I, <laughs> you got a clown. But a lot of a lot of dudes come to me like they be like, "How does it feel?" And I'm like, "That's just a regular chick. That's just a regular. I mean, she's Bro. big to me. That's my wife. Right. That's just a regular chick." So well, what happens? Let's is, not get too far from what I said. Okay. Okay. It's a regular chick. Bro. When you yeah. date a woman. And that woman is participating in homosexual activity, and she's with you. Yeah. Does that change her outlook on you? Does that make her start to look at the way she treats you and say, hey, I fuck bitches now, and I feel like I can treat women better than you treat me, so therefore I don't have to respect you? I believe if you allow that, everybody to each his own, but I believe if you allow that in your household, you you have the, the respect yeah. level is gone. Yeah. I, I've always said this, and this is just me. You know, when I tell this to niggas, they they be like, "Now you front." I'm like, I don't want my chick to give to be fucking other bitches or oh, or fucking neither, other. Yeah. And the reason why for me is you allow you open the door to some other shit. You, you open the door to some other shit. Yeah. The respect level is gone now. She could ask. She could bring some other shit to you. Oh, yes, I want to try this. Nah, yes, you're sir. not fucking this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like like I, I, I like. I'll do that with some side or some other bitches like before but when it comes to like the main shit that you fuck with I don't I think when you open that door you you basically you you're allowing other shit to come in and that respect she look at you differently now I can allow other shit to happen you know what I'm saying like you you allow this you open the door to this so yeah. you know what I'm saying you got to be you're a man less. at some point nah, I don't, I don't agree with that shit I already know he don't agree with No that's cool I agree. I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah yeah What part what part Craig? Okay I'm like oh Go ahead, no, go ahead, show, go ahead. Nigga, I, like for me, when a woman like other women, that shit kind of cool. Like, you know it's what I'm dope, saying? Yeah, it's dope as fuck. No like, about it. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if my girl came no, in, no if, if my girl came in, <laughs> Okay, if my girl came in and, and, and a business eating her out or or vice versa, I wouldn't trip. I'd be like, okay, okay. Dude, 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 dude. I'd be like surprised. Now, what if that girl she eating out be like, he weak? Da, 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 da. Now, that she bitch got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's something different though. You know what I'm saying? I got to be in an equation. You dig? Like, <laughs> I have to like, be in an equation. Gotta be okay, an equation. Let me clarify. I don't see nothing wrong with women dating women and all that shit. That, but we talking about a different level of, of mm. situation right here. You feel me? So I feel like sex is a transference on some level of spirits, right? Right, facts, energy. So what's, yes. what's in me yes. goes in you. What's yes. in facts, that is true. Yes. So if nine times out of ten, no, I say less than that. I say six times out of ten, when you're dealing with a boss nigga like this who's, who, 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 who the world perceives as being a star and a nigga that's on his way, a lot of times he attracts broken people to him. Mm -hmm. Because they feel like he's whole and they need somebody like this to be to be a whole right. person. Yep. So now you now you allowing your chick to fuck with other women that you haven't necessarily vetted, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when women fuck with women, I mean it's half and half. You'll have a nigga that's hollering at bitches and bringing bras home to his broad. And but a lot of times real boss niggas have their bitch go find a bitch. And yeah, bring you her feel home. me? But bitches don't necessarily know how to pick bitches like him though. <laughs> No. 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 <laughs> then, look at gay relationships. It's all it's a lot of bad bitches 
with bitches who look worse than niggas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all about, yeah. yeah. Benny yeah. Siegel looking bitches. Benny Siegel. <laughs> you got but bitches you got Bitches do not know how to pick bitches. A chick. Some uh, niggas are fucked just because there's an extra pussy in the room. Real spit <laughs> No, because he had an assistant that was, uh, you know, in that life. And she was kind of, I knew the background. She was using this person. She was using the, so the stud type of figure was. Oh, you fucking stud? No, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm a man. You a dumbass nigga. <laughs> Show was just pulling a dildo to the side and fucking her while she's still in the I got a lot of female friends in that community, so. Oh, no, look. My, yeah. my cousin is one of my best friends. She has stud, been that way since we were children. Yeah. Been that way since we was kids. When she came out at 18, I laughed in her face. Some of the studs got the fattest asses. That's what I'm saying. They, 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 I was going they, there they with hate the fact. They hate the fact that they have it, though. They Stuff. they try their best to. Hey, Stud stand for still titties under that shirt. Oh, <laughs> with the D. <laughs> with okay. Stud. That's, it's, 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 he's he's he added it. It's a T. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Stud. 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 My nigga Stud. Oh, my nigga Stud. Okay. It made me. It made me insecure, though, for real. No, but not to get started. So, so not to get sidetracked. So, okay. Where was we at, Ken? Because we got sidetracked. Because like you were saying, did it make me... I'm just saying that the, the whole... Did I bring the wrong woman in? And I never had a threesome in my life. Every single time I ever try to have a threesome, the girls will start fighting. So I never had a threesome. So if you want to be my first threesome... That's unfortunate. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just playing. But yeah, no. I never had a threesome... Uh, even my child's mom was saying, like, hey, man, I'm not no weird type of chick. Like, if you, like, just rock with me because I, I, I got an understanding of life. If we, I'll take you to Brazil and I'll pick out a bitch and we can play with her. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not into that right. because I feel like the assistant that you got who's married to this stud, you know what I'm saying, who using this stud for her money, the stud is being her sugar daddy. Right. Some of these women are using studs like a sugar daddy, bro. Right. Oh, real spit. I'm, a sugar mama or whatever you want to call it. And I felt like that shit was so wrong because this woman was sweet. Right. This woman managed some of my friends in the industry. So I'm like, you hanging with this, you know, your assistant got a stud. This nigga. Know, sugar Seriously. daddy. And so am I your sugar daddy? Am I your male? Am I your beard or whatever they call it in the girl, you know, world? So I, I just never really uh, trusted her. And then after we got into a little altercation, Verbal. Never put my hands on this. I don't put my hands on women. Period. And you ain't gonna win no verbal altercation with Eva Marcel. If anybody know her, if you try to go back and forth with her, you gonna lose. She catty. Right. You feel me? So I lost. She got in my ass, and then she called the police because the house was mine. And it was in my name. Right. So she wanted me to get out, yeah. and she called the little lesbian chick over, and that lesbian chick blocked my car in the driveway, and like, yeah, you ain't going nowhere. And I'm like, so. She told me when y'all be out of town, 
she just got a habit of when y'all sleep in the bed, she she cover her, she curl her, she used to curl her leg around me a certain way. Like that's the only way I could fall asleep. She's like, yeah, and I do this with her. I do this with Sparkle whenever we're out of town. I, Damn. I go oh, like this. Like mm-hmm. No, I'm just like, I'm confused. I'm like, this is somebody you use as like a teddy bear to go to sleep at night. And now they hear when we getting in this altercation verbal. Right. When you're trying to get me out the house and they block my car out in the driveway. And they sit there and they like, they look like the, the jealous boyfriend. Like, yeah, right. I've been telling you not to fuck with this nigga. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, I don't know if it's some lesbian circle shit going on. I wasn't sure. Right. But I was like, I didn't put my hands on her. So what TMZ said was they got a hold of the videotape, 911. It's like, we're going to put it out. Eva hit me up like, look, don't say nothing. I go through this type of shit all all the time. This is a, a, a crisis management. You don't say nothing, it'll go away. Long story short, she ended up. Her, whoever her publicist is, who she was with, um, Primary Wave, whoever her people was with Primary Wave, they put out a, a statement. And the statement said, you know, Kevin McCall has anger management. I was afraid for my daughter. I had to keep her out of danger from him. And I had to take him away. And they made this statement when I didn't make a statement. So all over social media, you see this statement about how she had to rescue my daughter from this. This, this dangerous situation simply because I didn't make a statement and say that, yeah, we was going back and forth, you know, I lost. Right. I got on the phone <laughs> and told him, hey, she mad because I smoked up all the weed. <laughs> and she had just had the baby two weeks before, so right. she was going through uh, oh, post, 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 that post I always say post-mortem. It's what? <laughs> post-partum. Post-partum. postpartum. Yeah. Which is real, bro. You yeah. gotta, as a man, you gotta have some capacity to take all the dynamics of a woman, your daughter, the the friend, the lover, the mother, you feel me? Women act like your daughter sometimes. They right. they throw tantrums, they and you're supposed to love them through that. It's a dance. Right. Um Well, Kevin, quick quick, uh, quick question. Do, do you believe when people say that if there's too much smoke there's fire? What is I don't even know what, what that mean. It means If you wonder too much then shit. If you even got a wonder and guess then shit, something's up. Yeah, in theory. So Eva is not the first person to say you've been on domestic violence. The person. No, that's the first, first person. There is. An well, second. second. A se- she's the second person. Yeah. So and then you did admit to kicking down doors and things of that nature, right? Breaking your own shit, basically. Right. In theory. Right. Do you think you have anger issues towards women? That not towards women. I have anger issues. Period. I have anger issues when people try to manipulate you and people try to use issues that you have. Let's say you do cocaine or let's say, which I didn't do. Let's say you have an anger issue and then somebody tries to manipulate that. Oh, you won't marry me. Oh, you got anger issues, X, Y, Z. Is is it because I won't marry you or do I have this issue? And she was right. I did have an anger issue, but not towards women. You know, I have had traumatic experiences with women, my mother, but... I don't have anger towards women. I don't like I don't like niggas that do bitch ass shit. Right. I don't like niggas that manipulate or twist stories and and you know have that Absalom spirit where they manipulate people to you know they have flying monkeys and stuff to make their narrative work. But to answer your question, she she gave me a ultimatum. She said, "Look. If you marry me and you go to anger management, I'll make sure this restraining order goes away." Manipulation. Is that, Damn. Okay. Is that so? That's all I'm trying. Is to that why you posted the picture with uh, with you, her, and Tyrese, and you were sticking the tongue out, and everybody's basically like, "Why the fuck is he posting this shit up?" But that was like two and- years later. So two years later, I was broke. I was living on my grandmother's couch. When you don't got no money, as you notice now, I have a little something because I sold some of my publishing. Right. So I don't have time to really care about people. But if I get broke, I'm gonna get thirsty again. I might rob a nigga. <laughs> like for real, right? I mean, I've been there. Cause when a nigga is robbing you, you like, I'm hungry, bro. Why did you post that picture? Well, what picture you talking about? I was kind of teasing. Why? I used Kevin, to do a lot of dumb. Kevin, sh- Kevin, I used to do a lot of dumb shit. You seen what yeah. Billy Sorellis did, right? I haven't even paid attention to it. And that's why I wanted to explain what he was doing. The shit is weird, and if you're doing it for attention, nigga, have have a. Some you selling at the end. Is he finna do a, a, a tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he about to sell a book? 
was selling the comedy special. He shot his comedy special. So you get what I'm saying? I didn't have nothing to sell. I just was talking shit and trying to get attention, just like I got a Chris Brown's attention when I posted the picture, picture of Rihanna's face all beat up. Mm -hmm. Now, this is before I had allegations of the second vic a victim, alleged victim, what? which I did hit her because she hit me. You feel what I'm saying? Which yeah, is not cool. I understand. I understand. I understand. I know you. I understand. Heard it from all your OGs on that. Right. But I'm. Nah, I'm OG and I've even beat up niggas up. over this. You hit a woman, you so you if you want to fade over this, if you feel like I shouldn't hit women, catch a fade outside, bro. Right. So don't don't sit here right here and act like you think I'm some weird ass nigga, bro. I don't. Shut the fuck up, my nigga. I'm a real ass nigga. I fuck up niggas, bro. Right. It's niggas that come around and try to jump me. It's niggas that try to wait till I get around the camera and switch the fucking narrative, bro. So if you got a problem, if you think I hit women like I told Eva Brothers, catch a fade, my nigga. All right, let's, let's, right, let's chill out. Let's chill out, Kev. Come on. Yeah, not, don't play with me like that, bro. I don't hit bitches, bro. Not, I got two daughters, my nigga. That's not the picture we're painting. If you, if we're so if you want to paint the picture, yeah, I got an anger problem with niggas like you right, who do that little passive shit like Kev on stage, bitch. Right, let's, let, 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 Catch a fade, nigga. Let's go to a commercial break. Go to a commercial break, cuz. 97th Street, bro. We're going to go to a commercial break. I'm going to go out and talk to y'all. That type of shit I hate, my nigga. If you really think I hit bitches, catch a fade, my nigga. Jeff, that's not where I'm going with it. Will. Well, nigga, paint oh, the picture right, right, bitch. I'm tired of people not saying what it is, man. I'm a director. Hey, I'm a director. <laughs> Places, everybody. Son, I apologize. I took some risks to provide for you and your mother. It landed me in jail for eight years, and it took me away from you. Excuse me. What's up, Phil? Hey. What's going on, Flint? Just left the shop, man. You left us up there. I figured you might oh, need okay. this Appreciate here, man. What y'all got going on up here? All oh, right. y'all chilling. What's happening? Hey, Charlie, what's up, my nigga? What's the word, what's my guy? What's up, oh, you know, man? What's the word, dog? Man, I ain't seen you in a minute, you, man. What you been up to? Oh, shit. Not drinking enough protein shakes, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you, you know, man. You, when you light-skinned, you, you got to play the part, man, so don't nobody fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can use that kind of life, man. Fuck the kids, man. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. What's been going on, though, man? I'm telling you, nephew been out there doing it big, though. All these views, man. What is this nigga doing? This man is a lyrical and creative genius. I need me a thick but no homo, though, because that's that gay shit. Nigga, as long as I say no homo, it's not gay, right? Absolutely right, sir. Anime. Shout out to Charlie Google's film. <laughs> Attention, can't call me Papi, I teach her This is so dumb. Everything about this was iconic. Let me know what you think, bro. I got you. I mean, we should call. Like, this needs to be the best meme. This needs to be the next Old Town Road. <laughs> What's going on with you, you big French bull, Mastiff Terrier looking motherfucking dog ass nigga, man? You just like your daddy, man. Look at you, boy. You get big. Ah, shit. Nigga, I almost broke my hand, you bum. What you feeding this nigga? A you whole got, lot of greens. You man. got some more of it? I'm hungry. They got some weed in here. <laughs> I want to take some time, though, man. I got to thank y'all, man. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for holding down the shop while I was in the, in the penitentiary, man. No, I'm just saying, right. just all you got to yeah. do, nigga, is put the. Yeah, run yeah. the alternator. Run the line to the alternator. Yeah, the, the tube got to go in the hole. Without you, none of this would be possible. Right on. I love you, man. Brother-in-law, you've been a rock, man. You put money on my books. You kept me eating while I was locked down. He was there for my son. You've been a rock for my wife. Whatever you need, I got you, man. I'm just, I'm just humbled by that, brother. I gotta say though, man, if I had something in my glass, I would toast you. You've been doing right by my sister. And I really honor and appreciate you for that. I know things ain't been perfect, but you've been doing the best that you can. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. And I appreciate you for that. Dad, me, glass me up anyhow. Even though mine's is empty, toast to you. To my son, man, I, I, I apologize, Junior. I wasn't living right. And because of that, the system took me away from you. The show you are watching is a paid program or advertisement. USA Network is not responsible for the claims and representations made by the sponsor. Hello world, I'm Cephas X. Hotep. 
I have a breakthrough for you today. Years ago, my ex-wife, come on, my beautiful ex-wife, we traveled to Kemet. I picked up what I thought was a harmless blueberry. Unbeknownst to me, it was a Godoji berry. Godoji. Godoji berries have healing qualities. They heal any and everything. You ain't got no hands? Godoji berry. You got a bad knee? Godoji berry. You a little slow and don't know where to go? Godoji berry. Baby, bring me a berry. Hurry up now. Hurry up, baby. Okay, baby. I mean, you need a damn dagger to give me a uh, berry? Why you got a dagger? My bad, baby. Okay, I mean, you know... Get the fuck up out the screen. Look. Yeah, this dude got the key to success, homie. You know, you're in and out. You're in and out. You just need to be out more times than you're in. And, and, uh, I'm going to get to that, okay? I mean, are you the cameraman or are you, are you me, okay? I'm me. You the cameraman, okay? Look, we walk the path of the great migration. Dogs don't think barks. They think words. Can you please go get me the bits? Bits. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Okay, look, look, look. I'm gonna eat this berry now. Look, there's a dog there. Look, look. We gonna bark at the dog. It's, it's, ain't nothing gonna happen. What, ready? Let's bark. Look. <laughs> See, nothing, nothing. The dog is not responding. <laughs> See, no joining. The dog doesn't know. Right? But when I get on my knees, I say, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. The dog comes right to me. See, the Godoji bear. It works here. And I swear this is not a scam. But you don't mean you Hey, go dial this number. Get them berries. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Who we getting collect calls from, baby? We getting collect. Okay, Joker. Hi, can I speak to Cephas X, please? Hold on. I'm trying to get a 3.5 of the Georgia Berry. What? Could, I... <laughs> Could you wrap those up in wool? Are you playing? Hang up the phone. All righty. <laughs> that was classic. <laughs> Why are y'all people? Serious callers, please. Okay, who is Carla? How you doing, Carla? How can I help you, Carla? Yo, Greg, it's your pops. What? Pop? It's your pops. Call 819. Come on, man. 819. I don't even remember. Police. Police. Yes. 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 At the end of the day, I can't complain. The only enemy I have is me and my own big head. <laughs> me and Charlie Google's been running scams since 1985, partner. Get it from God, my nigga. Are you a philosopher? Kind of unintentionally, I guess, yeah. Also, life is a beep, man. All my knowledge base is on how to control the bitch of life. That's the only one that is fucking with you and everybody else. And if you don't control it, she gonna run right over. Shut up, bitch! I said pancakes, bitch, okay? Turkey bacon is cool, too, but I need pancakes as well, okay, bitch? That's all I'm saying. You see I'm over here doing an interview. I know you probably got a nigga... Whatever, just pancakes and turkey bacon, bitch. And, I mean, you gotta control life. Cause everybody's fucking with her, so what makes you different? Oh, you've been bitten by the snake. I can tell cause you're looking for mistakes like great don't come with second takes. And that search for perfection, the journey goes to waste. How you on but you ain't? Crystal Ball says y'all ain't saints. Nigga. Uh, and y'all ain't crew, he the boss He don't do that greyhound with you The black bag belongs to you for a town or two Make friends with a bum, sleep on the street And that's the only nigga down with you Cause you all you got Preaching man can't do it, nigga call your shot He done brain fucked your girl And now she bringing them all you got Brace that label of sinner, now your balls is chopped But once you believe in you, then it's all to stop Woo!
Killers, cutthroats, and scoundrels. You keep a lot of niggas around. A circus over there, and they waiting to clown. Cause you lost what they found. Killers, cutthroats, and scoundrels. You keep a lot of niggas around. It's a circus over there, and they waiting to clown you. Cause you lost what they found. I only know what I know Sometimes I fall short when I'm slapping a hoe Mother told me hit back, father told me get strapped So when they come swinging, all you need is click clack Them hungry niggas will extort you, they almost forced to How you in Rome and they talk to Caesar Them west side niggas gon' check your visa uh. Yeah, no stab, that's a crab Can't run with a Charlie horse unlit lamp Plus that bitch, she with them niggas All shit snap She done turned your whole tail into a target trap They might as well take your bread But hopefully they leave your head Another Louis bag and we left for dead It's group economics, dog and sled If we don't pull for each other Then there's trouble ahead Killers, cutthroats, and scoundrels, you keep a lot of niggas around you. It's a circus over there, and they waiting to clown you, cause you lost what they found. Cutthroats, killers, and scoundrels, you keep a lot of niggas around you. She looking for a layup, I can tell cause when she talks she don't say much. And she used to be an A cup, got a new body from the waist up. From a setup bitch to a setup miss, she like a drug dealer cause she set up licks. Uh, and she halfway conscious, whole tepping in this halfway nonsense. How the fuck are you the real McCoy when I meet you with the truth but divide the soy? Cutthroats and scoundrels, you keep a lot of niggas around you. It's a circus over there, and they waiting to clown you. Cause you lost what they found. Well, we got we're back. We're back. We can't be suppressing the, shit. The thing that we got to remember is we're on the inside of this shit now. We're not on the outside of the bubble. So, the Bible says you reap what you sow. You know what I'm saying? So, you got to be very careful when you don't know a motherfucker and you learn them from afar and you meet them of what you allow to control your perception. You know what I'm saying? Because the niggas that you see on TV... And the songs that you hear from niggas on, like the people that do all the shit that you like, you really don't know them motherfuckers. <laughs> you niggas out there don't really know Brandon. You don't know Kev. You don't know Kev on stage. You don't know me. You don't know uh, Jay-Z. You don't know none of these niggas for real. You don't know LeBron, nigga. You don't know LeBron. Damn, I'm those. And at the end of the day, you got to respect the real response. Facts. Period, point blank, in the discussion. Because in life, if we really operate as humans, you know what I'm saying? It's the good and the bad. And if a motherfucker tell you how they feel about some shit, to me, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's To me, that's like, hey, at least a motherfucker let me know where I stand right now. You. you know what I'm saying? So right. I, and it's important to highlight... One, nothing happened, people, on our break. Can't be. Can't be. Get that dog shit, shit out of Brandon. Hey, Kev, Brandon realized he had a boot on. He's like, I can't do nothing with you. Hey, Kev opened up the backseat of the car. I'm like, yeah. Much love, dude. I mean, this this. This is a, we have real conversations here. And I, Kev did say something out, outside about how he does like the show and... You know, we we will ask tough questions, and everything like that, and I, and to me, it's it's healthy. At the end of the day, um, I think you will be highlighting in a, in a great manner by the time we're done. But I mean, this was real. This was this shit ain't this shit ain't scripted. Um, if you know, it gets emotional at certain times, a certain conversation. Right. But that's why we're all brothers. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're here to yeah. lift everybody up when things can be going down. We'll, uh, you know, we'll press difficult <coughs> conversation, but then we'll circle it back around to shed light of of you know of who people really are right and as a, as a black owned media company with no you know 
rich person or battery in our back, we have the power to really paint the, the right picture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so with with that, I wanted to still go on when you were talking about Brandy, because I know she was very uh, important in your life, of how you, you said she was a muse uh, to your career. I want you to kind of touch on that um, with your relationship with her. Right. Uh, man, thank you for just, you know, being understanding, being real with dudes, man. because it's a lot of dudes. You can't really have barbershop talk like up, this. Man, and we here, bro. They'll end up trying to blackball you, so it's refreshing. <laughs> Any nigga that would try to blackball is a bitch. Is a bitch. Thank you. Straight up and down. Thank you, man. Um, Bernie was very instrumental because it was a time um, everybody was laughing at me in the industry. Because I was out in downtown L.A., I had finally got another apartment after living with my grandpa, grandmother. After I broke up with Eva, I ended up living with my uh, grandmother again. Right. Oh. For two years, bro. Yeah. And that shit was hell. Man. Um, but I ended up moving to downtown L.A., and when I was out there, I seen so many homeless people that I was compelled to just... I just wanted to sing to them. And then yeah. I started finding out a lot of them knew how to play instruments. And, you know, yeah. it wasn't no corona back then, so I let them hop on it. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I seen some Mozarts out there, like, you know, like the real Jamie Foxx movie. How he was that, that bum downtown. Yeah. Did you ever see the light skinned nigga that beat beatboxing? Gangsta Red, that's yeah. my nigga. I got a video with him. Oh my God. He's so I introduced fire. Gangsta Red and Chris Brown because he used to be hanging out at the studio. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to get him to do a song, but he was a mess. He was a mess. Yeah. But um, anyway, everybody on the internet, it went viral and they was clowning me. They was like, he's so broke, he can't, you know, Chris Brown selling out arenas. He on Skid Row singing to the homeless. Right. I kind of did feel stupid. I was like, I thought that was cool, you know. Back of my mind, I'm like, Cause I wasn't doing it for the clout, right? So I didn't even see that that was some like humanitarian shit I was doing. I just right. wanted to do a concert for the homeless. If you want to get up here, come rock out. Everybody clowning me in the comments. So Brandy reposted it, and she like, everybody talking shit, but look what this like. I see your heart, right? And I see shout what. Shout out to Brandy. Shout out to Brandy. Yeah, shouts with, out. Man. That's a real ass move. For real, because I used to watch Brandy in the 10th grade and she had that song, Most. Best Friend. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, she talking to me. I'm going to be her best friend. <laughs> so I'm going through this depressing time where you have the America's Sweetheart top model saying you're, you're this batterer and you're this evil person. And then you have America's other sweetheart, Moesha. Right. Saying, I see your heart. You're an angel. This guy is just so loving and this mm -hmm. guy is heart and what he what he's trying to do for people. So she started really giving me validation. Right. My, my baby moms used to do that too because I used to think I needed chains and shit like Kanye. And she was like, nah, less is more. That's some ill shit. She taught me that. Yes, sir. She taught me that. And that's why I don't try to wear this chain right here is my daughter's name. I'm actually going to give it to her um, this week. I go like every week and I give her, like I buy a guitar and an amp or I get her like $1,000 worth of, you know, equipment so she got the ring the light and yeah, she could yeah, do her yeah, yeah. you know and then next week i'm gonna buy her um i'm going to michael's and i'm gonna get there the canvas so she could yeah. paint and shit like that right right so right. i drop it off they always say she ain't there i know she's there but yeah. you know i'm not gonna take my gifts back like oh i ain't seen no pictures da, 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 da. you know um hopefully she just see that i'm giving her the shit you know she'll, yeah. look, <laughs> that's one of the things where like brother that's you see that all the time when when, when when one parent's not allowed to see the, the child. When you can continue to do it and continue to put money in the bank, continue to put money in the bank, at some point that child will see for themselves by hook or by crook. True, you should. You know, either it's either going to be on purpose, somebody say, okay, this is what he really did, or they'll stumble up on it. But if you keep doing what you're doing, at some point the truth is going to reveal itself. And when you broke, just trying to be around is enough. Right. Because yeah. I went to a point where, you know, I couldn't get no placements and stuff, and it was like, oh, you're not paying this. I like, well, can I just please just help, please, you know? Right. What you just going to say? I was about to say, for any fathers out there, bro, somebody who helped me was, her name was Denise with Elite Legal, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Carson. Yeah, and Carson, exactly who helped me, my nigga, yes. <laughs> yes, bro. It's a real yes, bro. Yes, my nigga. <laughs> yeah, she helped me too, bro, so. Hey, that's funny hey, as hell, because you, you never know, like, just about saying her name, so but. Okay, she International shit bro, she yeah, up with yeah. everything, bro. Like my I daughter, I ain't seen my daughter in like two weeks one time, and I called her, bro, and like, bro, I swear to God, got the court 
everything. She charged Damn, me like three thousand, but just for the fathers that's out here, you know what I mean. That really is going through something that uh, you know, cause uh, man, like that should have drive you crazy. I've been there, right. you know what I mean. Especially when you're trying to do the right thing, you know, a lot of kids don't have no guidance because they think that the father's being a deadbeat, but they don't really have any support. You know, you feel like less of a man when you feel like the court system is like <laughs> right. fucking you over, yeah, bro. Right. So. If anybody in LA need, you know, any kind of legal, somebody help me was Denise, you know, uh, yeah. from Elite Legal. You want to say something? Elite, you said Elite Legal? Elite Legal in Carson, okay. bro. That nigga said, yeah, Carson. Yeah. And then, and tomorrow. And then, Kev, you did something I thought that was important. You was, could you said that when she was saying, don't say nothing, and then they'll take care of me. And Craig, you can attest to this, but I think, do I remember this? When Mike Tyson and Robin Givens did the interview. Yeah. Ooh. That's and what I was thinking when he was Whoa, saying Whoa, that's what and, it felt like. And when, I told you. So, <laughs> yeah, let, so it, let it go. And then, remember, she just painted the picture. He's he's this monster, and he's just sitting there, heavyweight champ of the world, and just drilling. But he was told not to say nothing. Do you feel it's the similar situation where it's the starlet, basically saying your so and so is this because of whatever reason? Because it did me reminds me of Mike Tyson, the Mike Tyson situation. I didn't understand, you know, media and having a media campaign and. You know, having to go out and speak on certain things, I I thought if I just ignored it, it would go away. Mm. And <laughs> it, it it didn't go away, and um, it affected my confidence as a man. It affected um how I deal with men. I felt like every man wanted wanted to beat me up. You hey, know, Kev, you <clears throat> said something the other day that resonated with me. You said. Sometimes not speaking on shit is worse than evil. Yeah, yeah. worse than doing it. Hey, yeah. hey, Craig, worse that's some real talk. It. And 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 I definitely agree with him, man. Because a lot of times, look, everybody has went through a stage in life where they just were just living, but they weren't really conscious. Mm. And then something happened that resonated with you, and you was like, "Hold up!" Wait. And rung a bell. And rung a bell, and it snapped you out of. Whatever, you know what I'm saying, comfortability that you had, and it made you start to see, you know, what was really going on. For me, I can remember specific moments. The first time that I started to really kind of become conscious and realize that maybe this isn't what I thought it was, was when I read Malcolm X's autobiography. Um, that was the first thing, probably when I was like in the sixth grade. Yeah. Then years went by, years Damn, went by. Sixth grade? Sixth grade, yeah. And then, I, and then that Columbine shit happened. Right? Yeah. And I remember being young in certain areas where bringing a gun to school or niggas having a gun at school was normal. Yeah. And then I see these little white kids get shot up and now it's a big deal. When niggas my age been dying since I, I had that remember. same oh, feeling. Man. And that was another thing that happened to me that was like, okay, Ooh. damn, but maybe shit ain't what I thought it was. Like, why is this new? This is happening at school all the yeah, time. Look yeah. at there was some white kids that happened to. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> That's why people got to speak up, man, because you can say something, even though it might be uncomfortable for you saying it and everybody may hate you, you may say something, like Pac said, that can spark change in the next nigga's mind. Mm -hmm. Don't run from the truth. The truth will set you free. You just got to have the courage to tell it. And, like, look, you also hit on something earlier. When you said the whole issue between you and her happened, who's the person that spoke? The publicist, right? See, this is what you people don't out there don't understand. When we get a lot of this news, it comes from a publicist, a person trained that went to school in creating a framing a narrative to guide you to what you should think. I talked about I brought this down on my show yesterday, a framing of a narrative. If there's this whole picture in here, but you only frame DJ show in here, mm. if two people see the whole picture and two people see DJ show, it's gonna be a big argument. They're going to say, no, it's only one nigga in the building. What the fuck are you talking about? I see, nigga, I'm looking at the cameras. One nigga in the building. The people looking at the at the whole picture are going to see, no, nigga, it's like 10 motherfuckers and they all stink. What the fuck you looking at? <laughs> it, yeah, it come down to oh, vantage points. So whether you're talking about sports and the perception of your favorite athlete you think exists, the perception of your, of these artists and these people you think are just gods because, oh, they sold so many, had so many Grammys, Everything that they say is released, including their Twitter, through publicists. People trained at creating a, a narrative, to a framing, to guide you to whatever conclusion they want you to do. Awesome so if yeah, so if it's her publicist releasing the information, they're going to frame the narrative in a way that's going to make their client look good and the next person look bad. Look, mother, get your out your emotions and understand how the system works. 
The way you get through bullshit is getting a systems analysis of how systems work. And when you understand entertainment, sports, these contrived things we see on TV, the information we get is from somebody trained and creating an illusion to your dumb ass. Understand that when you talk to, listen to the man himself, give him more the credibility that you're giving these motherfuckers, these faceless motherfuckers on TMZ. Facts. It's just weird how you would take the word of a third party over the word of the person that's involved with the situation. Nigga. Yeah, and it's two sides. What's well, three sides? It's three sides to every story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's what happened. It's your side and it's the other person's side. So yeah. you got to weigh everything, man. Anytime somebody is not speaking on something, they have something to hide. It's facts. Man. Why wouldn't you speak on it? Why wouldn't you speak on it? If, if, huh. if you're so right about how you feel and this motherfucker <laughs> is such a bad person... Then why wouldn't you particularly speak on it? Why do you have to ha hire a publicist? Right, uh, why do we have to wait six months for you to respond? Why do why do we have to go through all these different avenues if somebody else who's involved in the situation is willing to speak? So you got to respect the shooter more. Stop respecting the motherfucker that's not shooting because they don't really have you know what I'm saying they they not they not adamant about what's going on. Brandon, you was about to say something. Tory Lanez. Tory, you said Tory Lanez. Explain. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just saying, how are you talking about the, uh, the publicists and everything? How we had to wait like six months to hear what the fuck really happened. I was just, you know, sidebar saying that. Yeah, okay. It's a weird story. So the publicists, what, 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 what was we at? Okay, cool. So uh, I, I lost uh, I lost sight of we, where we were. You said respect the shooter. Okay, so ain't nobody respecting Todd, nigga. No, ain't nobody respecting Todd. <laughs> <laughs> shoot, shoot all you want, nigga. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. So you're down, so you downtown singing. Brandy finds you on the internet. You had never met her before that. How did I meet Brandy? Uh, I was at a Neo concert or something, and she gave me her number. And then Brent, and then Ray J got in the, in the middle of us was like, nigga, what you doing talking to my sister, nigga? Yeah. But he was just playing. Yeah, yeah. Kind of basically showing, like, you know, treat her right if she is trying to holler. But she was just on some, like, big sister shit or something. Yeah. Three years later, after that, that's when you had me living in downtown after deuces and right. singing to the homeless, everybody talking shit about me, supposedly blackballing me, my baby mama shaming me in front of everybody. And uh, Brandy used to date Flo Rida. Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, I forgot so, she did. That's a big nigga, too. My baby mama used to date Flo Rida. Oh, and she Flo took Rida. her from, she took Flo Rida from Brandy. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. Brandy told me this. I wouldn't even be able to push. Oh, and you I could hope you smash Brandy after that. Not a good record, bro. Not a good record. I wanted to marry Brandy, bro. She was like, you know what? She was like, I already got a daughter, but I I'll have one more kid for you if you want a son. That nigga gonna call and I was like, Brandy, make me a believer, like shit. That nigga gonna be rapping like Mace, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> but a Kobe, nigga Kobe wasn't the same after Brandy. He turned into a whole different nigga after Brandy. Brandy Brandy's solid, man. That's hilarious. Brandy is solid, man. Yeah. yeah. She really is solid and just being in that fan stamp, you know, looking at her as a fan and her giving me that validation when I brought her around the studio, all the niggas around start acting weird. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say where I brought her around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about how many niggas they shot? Nah, the niggas <laughs> <is> like <laughs> niggas do we doing that? Niggas be doing that. <laughs> they had just be like, oh, I used to play for you. And they was they was like playing me. They wasn't really giving me no burn in the studio. But when she came, it was just all gun ho. So I thought that was kind of cool. I felt like that's what she, Brandy's whole intention was doing. She was like, y'all sleeping on this dude. But I see what his real potential is. I see the real thing outside of the politics. So she was giving me like a little stamp of approval. And yeah. getting, Brandy got a little juice. She got major juice. She got major juice. Yeah, salute to Brandy. Like Bishop, what, Since 90s, 96? 95? Hey, salute to you, Brandy, man. That's some dope shit. Yeah, man. And then I started really liking her, and then she kind of backed off. Really? Yeah, because I thought it was real. You know how, like, even... Since I was a kid, girls used to be like, you're going to be a fine little chocolate nigga. You're going to look like Tyson. And I used to think they really liked me, but they was grown. Right. They were just playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she was, it was like some little brother. So I was like, hey, I feel like the media getting too involved. Look, I'm real serious about this. Let's keep it off the internet. And she was like, she, she faked the, uh, a rant. 
she faked a, a, a breakup or whatever you want to call it. She's like, oh, you embarrassed about me and you don't want to prove your love to me. Don't talk to me no more. Da, 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 da. And that's Online. how we on the phone. OK. Yeah. And that's how we stopped hanging out because yeah. she because I wanted to get serious. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, dang, I should have just kept just being me and just, oh, yeah. you know, because yeah. I really enjoyed hanging out with Brandy because yeah. I'm really a fan. Man, she's a star. Brandy is a star. And she bomb yeah. and she fine and she. Man, call Kev, man. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out the beat, man. Damn. Okay. So, uh, so now we're still in downtown LA. The whole Brandy set, uh, uh, situation phase out. So where do we go from here? What's next after that? I get desperate. I'm like, man. You know, I didn't even have a car. And any chick with a car, I would just, you know, I'd be like, man, maybe it's. I could at least build up from there. I don't want to just be walking around and after a while, if you didn't have a car and nowhere to stay, chicks would be like, well, if you're not fucking with me, I might pull that button on you and start telling your business or, right. you know, so it was a lot of um, extortion stuff going on. Right. Damn. Right. Right. But it, it taught me how to treat women, you know, as long as you keep them happy to, if you on probation, don't make a, a woman mad. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm she got you on a boat. You already on pro, You already in the doghouse, so it's kind of like, why is you even putting yourself in that situation? Like me right now, I am on probation. I don't. I usually don't tell people that because I'm about to get off. But I'm on probation, and she never tried to violate me. Never tried. To, we got in a lot of arguments. We got in some shit. Maybe I should have got violated. Maybe it, she should have got violated. You know, she. Maybe I should have called on her, and she stuck there for me. And I was the first person who never tried to use the law on me. She was like, we black people, we could figure it out. We adults. I did this, you did this, what's up? Like, what, are you sorry? Do you have remorse? What do you think of me? Do you love me? What are your goals for me? What's your... Oh, she got to get on the show. Hey, that's dope. Girl, hey, that's dope as hell because remember, Shahara Zad Ali talks about that. Shahara Zad Ali since the 80s been saying, look, man, you got to learn how to work the shit out inside the house. Because when you call the law in, they're going to ex escalate to a level that both of you are going to end up regretting. Right. So it's just good that you showed the maturity to do that. Because the only way she can exercise the patience to not call the law is if she trusts your level of maturity. And one, she trusted it. Two, you responded it by showing her. Yeah. So it, that, that was both of you guys showing growth on that. So that's a salute to and you. And then knowing it's designed, you know. The, the 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 colonizer whatever you want to call them made this button for black women whenever you want to you know let me know this slave is getting out of order push this button and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna lay it down for you you Smash know that like button <laughs> hey that's some heavy shit right there that's some real talk man that went together man that went together crazy was this before the Buster Orange incident. How you are, this in here, asshole. <laughs> you yeah. said it last before we left. I, I didn't even tell him what it was, man. You was about to say something. Because, Nigga, DJ like I was just telling the Brandon, I really appreciate men in my life, men in this world that ain't yes man, and who are willing right, to right. tell you about when you're doing wrong yeah. from a place of love, really. Right, 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 right. So, you know, I've heard rumors about Bustin' Rhymes my whole life. My cousin's been a background singer for Neo. She's been in this group called Diva. Shout out to Namisha Wilson. Her daddy was in a group called Bloodstone. Oh, so she Bloodstone, Ray Goodman and Brown. Yeah. Yeah. So she used to tell me about stuff in the industry. So I was weary about, you know, I'd be like, maybe you you don't know. She'd tell me stuff about the, you know, niggas trying you and stuff right. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast forward, I start getting into trouble with Eva and stuff like that. But nobody really checked me like, hey, you wilding online. Hey, slow down. Yeah, like yeah, right. the way you looking don't look good. So it was a BET week, and this is about three years after I've already been wilding out. I get a lot of rewards for the bad behavior because we're living in a, a attention economy. So when you right. act out, Shade Room, Shade Room gonna put it out when you spaz. Right, right, right. You know when you act out, Nicole Bitchy, that's old, but yeah. people gonna put out. You know when you act in this way, and I really was just trying to get my baby mother's attention or Chris Brown's attention like hey remember me like I know they know me as a per the person they know is good right. I don't even have to convince you of that these people were my friends right. you know so I just be trying to remind them hey it's me cause they won't answer the phone and shit like that but right. it make you look stupid when you are doing it in front of the whole well you I like the way you do it because you bring it out on your show. You yeah. have a platform, but I'm using Mark Zuckerberg shit. 
Right. You know, so, yeah. so I'm getting in a little boosy situation. Yeah, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, let me back on. Hey, let me go. I'm going to act up and get viral. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was getting rewarded for a lot of the shit, like, you know, talking about her and, you know, saying her. Coochie smell like donkey meat and <laughs> all kind of dumb shit. You know, and they was rewarding me, bro. That nigga said donkey meat. <laughs> so then you fast forward, and when I was even right, people would just go back to the times I, I spazzed out. Right, right. And I was like, fuck, I got to start having a track record of doing good shit, which is what I didn't just do a few minutes earlier with my boy B. It's all good, man. But it, it happens, y'all. I'm in anger management. I'm learning ways to get skills to not deal with when mm -hmm. I feel emotional. Because my mother was emotional and she was a gangster. If she had this physique I had, she'd probably be, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nigga. My mom, <laughs> on the yelling, they talk about it. She threw a knife at my dad in the door like, God <laughs> damn. Like, you know how you do it at Target? Yeah. yeah she threw a knife at my dad. Oh, man. Oh, I meant to miss yeah. him on purpose. I missed him on purpose. And Ayana's like, that's not okay. <laughs> I missed him on purpose. That's hilarious. Yeah, man. Uh, man you was finished. You were saying, you were saying something. I was just saying rewards for the bad behavior. And, um, oh, the Buster Rhymes. And then Buster Rhymes... Uh, he finally, it was a BET Awards. I had got shot that year. I got shot by somebody that I grew up with. I used to take him to school what? and stuff like that. Damn. Because it's gangs in my, it's gangs yeah, in my, yeah, yeah, in my yeah. family. It's basically yeah, somebody yeah. in my family. He's basically in the family. Right. He's, he's a cousin. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, yeah. Because you, you ever seen Juice? You ever seen at the funeral after he killed Raheem and he hugged yeah. the mama and he go like this? Yeah. yeah. I've been yeah. through that, my nigga. Oh, my God. I've been Whoa. through that. I've been through that. See, again, that's. I'm glad we're getting this. This is your story. Right, yeah. People right. people so want to judge some people from afar. Yeah. But motherfuckers got a story. And you can't... Com people think that they have this thing as if oh, everyone God. else's life is my life. Yeah. No, niggas got stories. And how they react is how they react. The biggest thing in life, the lesson of Malcolm X to me is this. You don't study a person for who they are. You study the journey. Mm. You know what I mean? Because... Also, it's also okay to not be perfect. Dope. You understand what I'm saying? Nigga. Like, it's actually okay. Just to be. Yeah, to be. Exactly. Buster. Right. So, I got you. Yeah, because life, life, life is profound and profane. You need it all to exist. Most definitely. So, he, he, a lot of people, when you're a broken person, like, I see a lot of people do this to women. When you're broken, a man to come and try to, you know, prey on that. And try to wound you. It's something to come <laughs> with it. So, I'm always aware of this. I heard the stories about busting rhymes back in the day. But when we did Look at Me Now... In the studio with Chris Brown, he was oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. one time I seen him choke out a nigga at a pool party at a. <laughs> I seen him yeah. choke out Lonnie Burrell because Lonnie Burrell was taking credit for writing Deuces. <laughs> and he got a record deal for it. Buster Rhymes signed him to his record deal for no. writing Deuces. Damn. So my cousin, like, yeah, that go my cousin, he wrote Deuces. And Buster Rhymes, like, what? Choke out the nigga. <laughs> so that's my first experience with Buster. Fast forward, I'm, I'm wilding out in the media, and he's like, look, bro, every man, every real nigga has been through this. I've, I've had my children taken. I've had the women lie on me. I've had all that stuff. But he's like, you got to remember, it's a lot of people looking at you. You got a lot of potential to make a lot of money. And there's investors in this business. There's investors who are not in the entertainment business. And when there's a project, your name may come up, and it may be four people, and three people may say, Yes, you know, Kevin is a good look. And then one person may say, you know what, Kevin's a liability. Look how he's acting in the media. Look how he's beefing with Chris Brown. I don't want to deal with Chris Brown and his team. It's a no for me. I'm not putting my money in this. Yeah. And he's sitting here telling me this. And he got a group of niggas winning, but he keep blooding me a lot. Like, yeah. Blood. You did, blood. And yeah, Buster yeah. Rhymes was doing that. Buster Rhymes. Yeah. And he's from New York. And by the way, you know, it's we're, we're, we're in Hollywood or downtown. So we, we out here in L.A. And you an L.A. nigga. Right. I'm an L.A. nigga. I don't like to per se say I gangbang, but I, for my section, it's, it's Crips. It feels a certain way. You know what I'm saying? And this is like, why is you blooding me so much? I niggas said, don't understand that shit feel a certain way you from L.A. I said, hey, my nigga, stop blooding me like that, my nigga. Like, <laughs> And he was like, what? What, son? Walk over here, son. So I was already on some. That impression was on point. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was already on one because I had just got shot a month before that. It was in the media. Uh, I was feeling like a big dog. I was at Tyrese's house. I went there the day I got shot. Yeah. 
And Scotty Pippen was like, what's up, Kevin? K-Mac? Oh, Scotty. Scotty Pippen, bro! <laughs> right. Yeah. What? Right. Yes. Yeah, Scotty like, Pippen, bro, nigga. Bro, that's Scotty Pippen. How does yeah. he know me? Right, 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 right. And I'm shy, and I'm like, wow, this is, this is fucking crazy. So fast forward, um, I'm still a little loopy because of the shit. When you yeah. get shot, I started thinking I was Tupac. I started right. even calling myself. <laughs> Everybody who got my number at this time, I said, no, my name is Bishop. <laughs> because I was really poetic justice like a motherfucker. No, 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 the nigga tell his homeboys, no, no, it's cool, I got him. And we take a walk in the middle of the dance floor. You got to remember, it's, it's BT week, so it's people from all over the country yeah. in California. So they watch him, bust the rhymes. Oh, Kevin McCall, they arguing. So we go in the middle of the floor, I'm like, damn, I hope he kind of back off. But like by the time yeah. he get over here, he get a little scared, so I don't got to knock him out. Right. So he get over there, he want to look hard a little bit, but then he, he kind of tone it down, he like, Kev. You wasn't acting like this in the studio. This ain't the Kev I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like this ain't the Kev I know. <laughs> what's, the, what's the movie when he was in college? Oh, High Learning. High Learning, yeah, yeah. High yeah, Learning yeah. Buster right there. Uh, he hit me with the High Learning Buster. So then he's like, I break down. I'm like, oh, it's my kid. Because it's kind of like how I just got into it with, with Brandon. If y'all didn't, you know, when we was outside, I cried. I broke down because real niggas cry when it's something that's hurting you like that, like your children. And shit like that, and they got you being so misunderstood, and you misspeak at times. And I'm like the prime candidate for that. I always misspeak and misrepresent myself at times. So I cried out there with Brandon, and I, you know, I, I consoled him. Right. You know what Brandon I'm saying? Wipe some of that dead skin under his boot on. <laughs> <laughs> That nigga, that nigga Brandon used some of them tears to lotion his elbows. <laughs> it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't no wrong with crying, though. Man, look, but he nigga. tried to capitalize on that because after I seen he was talking again, I felt like that was a real good bust. I still appreciate you telling me, like, acting a certain way could fuck up my uh, investments in the years. I mean, in the future when, when people want to invest and stuff like that. So I've been doing a campaign to just show who I really am. I, I appreciate that. But... Once I start breaking down and crying, the nigga try to console me and he start talking in my ear like, Kev, I got you. <laughs> Kev, don't cry. <laughs> so look, I'm like, damn, bro. I was just, I was just about to beat your ass. <laughs> then I cried. Now I want to beat your ass again. <laughs> hey, hey, what song came on when he was whispering? Wanna make, wanna make, wanna make your body. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you already said he was a booty in the booty, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, so bus, you know, if if, if you uh, whisper in my ear again, it's it's a fake. When a nigga cries, like you gotta get back. It's alright, it's alright, man. You don't get close to a nigga like come on. I gotta get it, then I gotta go, and then I gotta get it. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You always gotta stay on your guard, is basically. Crazy. Crazy. Like, how you whisper in my ear, nigga? You just did what? <laughs> <laughs> Got you all in check. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was possible for that nigga to whisper. Hell no. Yeah, bust the whispering. I, I didn't think I can. I can't see it. That yeah, it's so yeah. loud. Yeah. I appreciate the honesty, Kev. Yeah. So that's crazy. Okay, man. So we. uh 
So y'all, so y'all dead it on the dance floor. It's all good. We dead it on the dance floor. You know what I'm saying? I, I take what I could take from it, uh, and I learned to just try to start not looking like the bully or the aggressor all the time. I try to. Right. You know, I already got shot for talking to this dude in my neighborhood. He used to steal my bike. He used to leave work in the yard, and we used to have discrepancies about that. The problem is, is he's let's say I got a cousin named CJ. He's little CJ. Right. So he's basically in the family. So you got this conflict of my cousin that's in that life. Right. And what I'm saying, the rules are. So I just kind of learned to separate myself because once you call a man a bitch, which I really try to work on, bro. Yeah. Some niggas will shoot you over that. Never call a man yeah. a bitch. Never invite a man to your dick. Is what New York niggas say. Yeah. Kwame Brown yeah. said that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't say suck my dick. Shoot you for uh, turning your back on him during a conversation. That's crazy. Yeah. Real spit, nigga. If I'm talking to you and I'm having a serious conversation and you and you turn and you're not looking at me, that you that's like calling a nigga a bitch. It's like saying Damn. Like, whatever I'm saying ain't important. That's why they do that in battle. You know rap, what? Nigga. Definitely. You know, you know what, brother Kaba Kaba they said when I talked to him. Y'all know Kaba Kamene from Hidden Cutters. He was just talking about how black people, how we are as nature. We, re we, we, we relate to one another. The European relates to things and items. The Asian relates to his culture. So the biggest thing you can do to a black person when you study our nature, and this is in Sheikh Ganta Diab's book, uh, African or or uh, Origins of Civilization. When you disrespect another black man's humanity, that is the biggest disrespect you can do to us. Most definitely. That's who we are as a culture. We've been so Europeanized, they think something different. The biggest thing you can do from them is steal. We don't really give a shit about stuff. We, we act like them when we steal and shit. Our biggest thing is the respect as a man. Well, look how they, te look, look how they teach us to respect each other. Some people <coughs> won't respect you until they see what you have. Woo. Yeah! Woo. So you're already saying that I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Yes. So now if I deal with you, I'm all, if I choose to deal with you, even though I don't have enough for you to respect me on a certain level, subconsciously I know that you really don't fuck with me like that because I don't have what you think I should have. So how could you ever have a healthy relationship when half the people you're around are always looking at what wow. you have? Facts. Wow. Yeah, like fuck. if somebody's looking at what you have, you can't, you can't necessarily trust that person because if you reduce my humanity to items, that means you don't understand your own humanity. Damn, man. Preach. And we have to understand that. Church, nigga. So, <laughs> so, like, so, like, when people say, oh, black person did some shit because you disrespected, yeah, because we the first people on this earth. Well, look, when you, get and, accused, when you get accused of a crime, in order to fight your crime, you have to have money. Your word, having your word is not enough. Come on, man. Facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Facts. Mm -hmm. you, you should be, you, you can't go to court on your word. I remember I got it. <laughs> you, can't. you can't. And you got to have the money to pay somebody else to have a word for you. Yeah. Damn. Break it down. Man. So, I mean, you got to understand the dichotomy and the systematic programming mm. that goes into place when it comes to our culture and why we don't value each other enough because it's always about you it's always about what you have or what you don't have and, and if you realize that i feel like you'll go a lot further i think it'll help women choose a better mate it'll help men men choose a better woman it'll just make everybody a lot you know so, happy somebody called That's you true. craig flo dollar <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was a scumbag. I wish I, I wish I was. I wish I wish I, I wish I hated myself enough to be a preacher. Oh, uh, hey. that's a You feel what I'm They're saying? Selling hope. Hey. I don't hate myself enough to be a preacher. I'll be rich, bro, because people just want to hear fantasy shit. They don't want to hear what's real. But anyway, Ken, where, where was we at, family? Yeah, you just reminded me, just like I was going through all my, you know, court cases and stuff, and studying God and stuff like that, and I just noticed the parallels of how. They they mimic the whole court, they mimic the whole court set like life, like God. So you God only God could judge you. Right. So they have the judge as God. Right. The accuser is the devil. Right. That's the mm -hmm. DA. Right. Trying to get you in trouble, but the only person willing to save your ass is, is Jesus, and that's your attorney. Your attorney. Right. And then you got the twelve disciples. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then when you take the when you take the stand and you give them your your story, it's your testimony. 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 Testify. Can I get a witness? Hey. 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 Do you swear to tell the truth, oh, the whole 
truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Somebody said God is real though. Ain't that crazy when somebody's inflicted with that religion? How they think? Indoctrination. Yeah, yeah, like look, look. If you uh, look, you're right. God is real. Go hug a tree. You'll see God. True. I mean, that's crazy that they would hear him say that, and their response would be that God is real. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the devil. Fuck the profoundness of what the nigga said, nigga. I'm gonna go back to what I know. <laughs> well, I, because to me, I mean, that was some that was some deep shit, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that's that. That was deep. Um, okay, so. Where are we now, Kev? <laughs> where where are we today? And where, and where are we going from today? Okay. I'm in counseling right now. As you see, I still feel like I got tools I need to uh, acquire to teach others, too. Because I feel like a lot of the violence and stuff that happened in society, it's a learning curve. If somebody would have taught me about, you know, just the dichotomy, I mean, the... The, the breakdown of a woman and you know how a woman is, she's always going to test you. You know, reading a book by David Dita, I would ex encourage you all to go read that, uh, The Way of the Superior Man. Mm -hmm. I used to read it, it didn't really stick, but now it's starting to resonate with me. And I uh, also suggested this book, The Nipsey Hustle, and he was reading it. Um, I think Nipsey Hustle should be a saint, my nigga. Hey, yeah, <laughs> Nipsey really should be a saint. Oh my God. I it was, it was crazy being around him. Two Maybe. years, bro. He's around for yeah. two years. He's one two of the most years. profound humans that I've ever had the pleasure. I wish I could have met him and been around him like you, man. He was he he, he should be a disciple, nigga, or something. He should be something. We need to, we need to do something with that man. He's beyond a rapper. This camp nigga, reminds this... me a lot of his camp. Yeah. And, and, and how y'all conduct yourselves and the things y'all do it was a lot like this. We used to watch uh he used to put uh, the Fab Five up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to watch documentaries or we watch That's Iron me. Mike. We'll watch yeah, that yeah. type of shit. And the shit just brought us together and let us really put it in perspective. I thought it was the person who put him on the spook who sat by the door, but I didn't know he read the book. The book is crazy. But Claude Anderson put me on the... the, the it's on YouTube for free. Right. So I used to watch mm -hmm. that in the studio, and that's how we kind of came together. He was like, you a different type of brother. like." How'd you meet Nipsey? I, um, his studio was across the street from mine, and I was about to lose my apartment. I had just lost my studio, just lost my girlfriend, lost everything. And I seen him walking across the street with Dallas Martin. Yeah, I always almost say Dallas Austin. Yeah. Dallas Martin, shout out to Dallas Martin. He went to school, college with my baby mama at Clark Atlanta. So he always had a lot of love for me. First person to fly me out of California to Atlanta to work with um What's that buff nigga that I be singing with the high voice? Uh, <laughs> they call him the pen. He look like a pit bull. Oh, you talking about Sean? Uh, 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 Sean. Sean King? Not Sean Kingston. Uh, uh, oh, he was right there. Yeah. They call him the pen, though. Yeah, Sean, yeah. Um, Sean. Buff nigga look like a pit Real bull. Real buff. Is that the dream? He sound like the dream. The dream? Buff nigga look like a pit bull. Who is that? Y'all, uh, uh. I'm thinking about got, uh, Sean Garrett. Sean Garrett, brother. Yeah. My God. Was on, uh, what's the name album? On the so I was thinking DuckTales. I, I was thinking I was, the Bugle Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was that nigga Uber driver one time. Sean Garrett? Yeah, I was that nigga Uber oh, driver one time. Yeah. Sean, Sean Garrett is obsessed with Chris Brown, yeah. and I thought he really he was. He telling you to roll the windows down. <laughs> 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 Hey, Get this motherfucker out. Man. I'm about to say, that was, I'm about to say, nigga. Shirt back oh, that nigga's shirt back open, nigga. What's wrong with you, nigga? You can't decide. You didn't decide what's happening, nigga. You won't take your shirt off. Uh, nigga, hey, nigga, I'll take my Show shirt off, nigga. Show us how you nigga. built, nigga. I don't even matter, nigga. Show us how you built, nigga. nigga. Hey, your hairline is still fucked up, shirt. nigga. I got one, nigga. I got one. Nigga, 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 I I got about five years left. Yeah, <laughs> There's only five years left. <laughs> now go ahead. Uh, you said so. I, you you, you, you met Nip Nipsey through Sean Garrett. Yeah, I met him through Dallas Martin, who was Sean Garrett's assistant at that time. Flew me out to Atlanta years before. Now, now Dallas is like the A and R for Warner. He's like one of them guys. Started mm -hmm. off as an assistant, but he's one of them dudes. Right. And he was one of the reasons Nipsey's career even went where it was. He was like, oh, there's K Mac. Had me come over and Mike and Keys really embrace me. Them is my me. niggas. Yeah. Solid dude. Shout out to Mike and Keys. Yeah, Mike, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike is really into, you know, R&B and, and just the... So he was like, Matt, come fuck with us. Like, I, let me rebuild your whole shit because I know how everybody copying your... He was the first nigga to tell me, everybody copying your style and whoop de whoop de wham I was like, 
I'm copying somebody's style. So how could somebody be copying my style? Like you feel yeah. me? But they were. I didn't know it. That's I didn't know it. I, I created a new style just from my influences. Yeah. And um so Mike was trying to he, he really kinda brought me together. Nipsey ended up losing that studio. Some niggas was hating and the police kept coming. Yeah. I seen the police come and raid this shit a gang of times. I don't know what was going on. Yeah, yeah. They didn't like Nipsey. They was hating on him. Something was going on. Then he went through something with his folks. Right, the right. shootout had happened. Yeah, right. So he had to move to another studio where a lot, a lot of people could know about it. Right, yeah. Right, right. So with that type of environment, it was hard to be around him. Yeah. Mike yeah. and Keys had access, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it was three studios. Downstairs was Nipsey, upstairs was Mike and Keys. And then you had my guy Mars, who was another one of my influences. Mars is a monster. Come on, Let me man. tell you something. I went to Mars Studio about two months ago. The nigga said, man, come through, hang out, man. So I come through, man. I show up to the studio. It's a shipyard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this nigga making beats on a boat? I mean, that's <laughs> I was amazed. But anyway, shout out to Mars, man. He one of the dopest niggas in the game. He that's how I know you done been to his new shit. Yeah. That's his newest shit. Yeah. <laughs> he coming to the show. He was supposed to come last week, but I think he'll be here next week. That's the nigga that, you know, when everybody was blackballing me, he gave me a shot. He the one who hooked me up with Maya yeah. to do a song with her because him and Maya have a, a a joint thing that they do together. Right. So when Mike and Keys, they didn't have a lot of time. Most of their energy was towards Nipsey. Yeah. Nipsey gave me some love and shit, but he was, you see where his career was, yeah, where he was going. So I used to think Mike and Keys was hating. We used to get into it because I'm like, you niggas won't let me get it off. Like, you know what I'm saying? You said I, I made everybody out his style. Let me sing on Nipsey shit, but right. it was it was a pecking order, bro. Definitely. That's the game. And That's the game. I learned a lot about music business and just how shit should go from being in that camp. Shout out to Mike and Keys. Legend. But my guy Mars had more irons in the bucket. And he's like, right. K-Mac, you just sitting here. Won't you come in here? So he would fuck with me. One day, I fell asleep with my daughter at the studio because I didn't used to get be able to get her often. So I had sent my baby mama a lot of money in Orange County, and she had moved back from Arizona. Right. Because she had took my baby to Arizona. Right, right. Sent her a game of money. She moved back. She let me see her for a week. Right. So I, I didn't want to lose money because I just was building this relationship with everybody. So I was at the studio with Mike and Keys. They couldn't work with me, so I fell asleep outside on the, uh, in the waiting room, and Maya came out. She seen me and my daughter, and she's... You know, when women see a man kind of with a daughter, they yeah. try to help a little yeah, bit because yeah. we only could do so much. We could only be so nurturing. Right. And it's that woman-to-woman -woman type thing. Yeah. And she's like, this nigga's a real father. He's right. like really trying to chase his dreams and do this music. Right. So she said, hey, Kevin. It's my first time talking to her because I watched her growing up with the Cisco video and all mm -hmm. that. Had the crush. Seen her with Jay-Z with the dress. Hey. She started having girls wearing a Jersey yeah. dress. Yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. North Carolina, so I always didn't. I didn't. I didn't want. I seen that she was working with Mars. I didn't want him to be like, nigga, I ain't fucking with you. You always trying to get at Maya and like other niggas used to do. Niggas used to be always trying to get at her in the studio. I'm like, you niggas is corny, bro. Like, I fall asleep on the couch with my daughter. She's like, I like that song you did the other day with Mars. I want to record it, and that's one of the only reasons I have a placement outside of Chris Brown because Chris Brown is my publisher, and I book a lot of songs through him, but this was an artist who came to me and allowed me to get on her album. Shout out to Maya. Man, Shout out to Maya. That's, that's what's up. That's what's up. Shout out to Maya, man. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. So, and shout out to Mike and Keys and Mars, that whole camp, the whole Nip camp, man. Them are some legendary dudes, man. They they blessed me with a track for my album. That's hard. Ocean, Mike and Keys made that. You know, they, they hitting for... You, nigga, they don't. <laughs> they feed at least, nigga, at they, least with mine. Yeah. Got to be over mine. Mine was ten k for yeah. deuces. Oh, they, you already know what they charging. <laughs> yeah, and they gave and they gave me the track. So I'm man. I love y'all niggas show. for that, bro. Real spit. Y'all call me for anything, man. Yeah. yeah, they probably saw your shirt choices. Like, let's just get it. <laughs> 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 like, you know what, man? We gotta bless this nigga with the B because he can't get no shirt. <laughs> show you like I did a couple of weeks ago, you're not going to come back for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nigga. <laughs> 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 Can you help me write some jokes for her? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about his teeth. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Maya, man. She's one of the most. 
naturally beautiful women. Oh my god, she doesn't age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a question? What do it look like up close? She is beautiful, bro. She's all natural. She vegan. She don't look a day over 25. Her body was amazing. She was like in some yoga and shit. She used to carry yoga mats in and out the studio. Like she's one of them yoga type shit. What she smell like? (laughs) 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 One thing I can say though. (laughs) I know. Why'd you whisper? (laughs) (laughs) Maya told uh, Mars and T Fly cussed her out and called her an old bitch. Uh, but that is not what happened. Uh, it could have happened because I used to get mad. As you see, I get mad and I'll say anything. <laughs> I look at Rick James on. I look at Rick James on Chappelle's show. Rick James on Chappelle's show. I used to be doing ecstasy pills, y'all. Don't fuck with ecstasy pills. Yeah. That shit, you don't know what it's cut with. And yeah. Anyway. Well, what's the smell? The smell of what? The ecstasy pills? You smell no. good. Do my ass smell good? Yeah. I didn't used to be up on my ass like that because look, 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 look. We had a scene though when she had the twerk on me and all yeah. that, and then somebody had took a picture in the background, bro, and then so Maya called me out. She's like, "Hey, take that picture down, like da da da." So I'm thinking she's going off to the whole my my baby mama, you know, he's a woman beater narrative. I thought maybe she started second guessing the video, yeah, and she didn't want people to see that she was twerking on me or something, and you know, she was like, "No, bro." Like, people have in this industry have said I was a hoe for years, and I ain't fucking nobody. Mm, she's like, she's yeah. like, people try to, they'll take any little picture, and they try to mm-hmm. make it like, Actually, you know, I don't have any class, and I'm one of the most classiest people in this game. One of the reasons they blackball me is because I ain't fucking. Yeah. Man. Wow. Damn. I really Shout respect that. I'll say my bad, my No, nah, I respect that. I mean, she set a boundary, and she told you what it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I respect that because... At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? She could have just left it and made you think it was you. Yeah. You feel me? So I respect that. Much love to Maya. To me, that's I, ever since I first seen her, I'm like, I got to figure out. And she's really wow. special, bro. Before you yeah. on no kids. Man, I just seen She's that really too. special. Well, I'll give you a couple. I'm doing good. I make over. She's like, single, Craig. I make over. Ah. I make over fifteen dollars an hour, man. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> Don't talk, Craig. I know I got the paper to fuck with you, you know what I'm saying? You, give you, me a shot, man. You know what? You gonna give up that swine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't fuck with the swine. I know I got the pimples that look like I eat a lot of pork and shit. Yeah, yeah, you do. This, these stress pimples, man. Yeah, yeah you got <laughs> Nigga, you must be stressing like a motherfucker. Fuck goddamn, them goddamn. <laughs> them goddamn, them pimples dark than the motherfucker. Yeah, goddamn. That nigga got dot, dot, dot over his eyebrow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> fuck you. <yeah>. Etc. <laughs> 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 <Et cetera. laughs> Hey, but you know, (laughs) but you know what's cool? (laughs) You know what's cool about what I'm hearing? What I'm hearing, because like all the time when we talk, when people talk, you hear a lot of people talking about ain't nothing but haters, and they talk about the bad, the bad, the bad. If y'all listening closely to his story. He's talking about where Brandy, a black woman, came around Facts. and really looked out for him. Two black women. They're talking about Maya, where Facts. a black woman came around. See, black women who are on that. Well, don't let these Democrats convince you to. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, no, politically. <laughs> don't let these motherfuckers separate you from the black man. Because all we see is black woman, black woman, and that is that the black man don't exist. Mm-hmm. And then when they do talk about black men, they talk about the most negative light. Right. Even within the most negative light this brother's got. You see black women coming still to help this brother out. Right. So it shows that regardless of how low we are right now as a people, our community still at work. We got to highlight shit like that because, you know what I mean, this, this shit still exists for those who think it don't. You know what? I want to take this time out. We're going to wrap up the interview, man. I want to thank Kev for bearing his heart and soul, man. I really appreciate that, bro. <laughs> we, we at the point in life when you get into your late 30s, we're responsible for being truthful and giving our experiences to those behind us so they could take what we've been through and and improve themselves. You know what I'm saying? Every black man, if you made it to your late thirties, you're you are now a teacher. Yeah. Hey, that's and, right. and, and if you're not that's giving true. up game, even even if the game comes through your pain, if you're not giving up game, these young niggas won't respect you. 
These young niggas will rob you. <laughs> For real, bro. For real. You got to be giving up game, bro. Whether you're a rapper, a comedian, if you're an entertainer and you depend on the people to get you where you need to be, you need to be giving up some type of game. And that's your responsibility. If you take care of the community, look at niggas like E-40. Man. Sugar Free. Salute to Sugar mm-hmm. Free, nigga. Jay-Z. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All these all these different people who come from different walks of life and they dedicated them. If you the last couple of Jay-Z albums, he ain't he not on that flossy shit. Right. He teaching. Yeah. Sugar free. He remained a pimp through his entire career, but he's teaching. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? E40 can go anywhere in California or on the West Coast. Cause since the inception of his first album, he's been giving up game. Okay. Be a nigga that's giving up game. Stop looking for people to give you something and start giving something and you'll get what you want in return. Dewan, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at hotepish.com. Also, breakthroughas.org. Uh, all my shit. I got my live drum sample packs out there for all you musicians. That shit funky to the motherfucker. I lay that shit down on the one for those looking for it. And we got that shit going on. I got my book, No Time to Waste. Salute to everybody. Y'all still buying that motherfucker. Every day I wake up, I got four or five books sold over overnight, so... I thank y'all for buying that book. Keep buying that motherfucker. And pretty soon I'm about to come out with a new book and a new whole webinar on communicating, parents communicating difficult things going on in life to their children. I'm going to give y'all some game on how to communicate that to the kids. I'm going to sign up for that class, Dwan. Uh, you can find me, guys. Thank you for having me again. Uh, find me at Kevin McCall underscore official when I do follow back and talk back. Uh, I like to get back to the people. Look out for my book and my documentary coming out. Oh, y'all can find. Oh. Hey. Now you can just uh, you can just follow me at, at Nick underscore Clark then on Instagram. Just follow me on there and everything's uh, where to find me at is on that Instagram page. That nigga said he followed back. Nigga ain't even answer my DM. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you nigga. Nigga tried to borrow some money from you. Yeah, nah, nigga, you stupid, nigga. Nigga want to borrow some money Nah, hell yeah, I was trying to borrow some money, so we ain't got to watch that shirt that you got on from Colors, nigga. He don't like nice shit. That's what I think. <laughs> He think I'm trying to show out because my shirt is clean. <laughs> 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 Love show, man. Nigga, I hate your perm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love you too, nigga. Nah, nigga. No, you can follow, uh, find me on uh, Twitter and um, on Instagram at the Real DJ Show or my YouTube at Plan A Radio. You feel what I'm saying? So make sure y'all follow me. Make sure y'all also get y'all music heard if your mom ain't a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell them where they can find you, Otto. You told them where they can find you already? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's Autobots on Instagram, and everywhere else is just Autobots, and that's O T T O B O T S. And if um, you can catch me on uh, this new Ford commercial that's running right now, so check me out. Wish hey, you guys all the best. Congrats, bro. You can find him on the Bernie Mac show as the nephew. Exactly. Thank you very much. Hey, look, y'all know, man, I'm still blocked on Instagram. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> Hey, drive, motherfucker. Hey, look, straight like this, though, man. I'm still blocked. It's been nine weeks, but no, uh, I'm just that nigga chilling in the background. I see y'all hating in the comments and shit. No, I don't sleep in the fucking alley. You not funny, my nigga. Rise! You- <laughs> hey, that nigga, him and Craig got the same barber, nigga. Oh. <laughs> you don't have a barber. <laughs> well, I just said y'all haircuts look this identical. This nigga is hairline list. <laughs> <laughs> he got hairline jokes. Hey, yo, Chet, 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 Hey! You don't know what it is. Regular underscore DLZ, man. We got the brunch coming up. We all going to be there. Hey, we going to have some fun, man. Uh, June 27th at, uh, don't worry. Get the t- tickets on Eventbrite, man. We oh, find it active. Yeah, you go, yeah, What's I the name of the event? Uh, it's called We Find It Active is where you're going to find it. Uh, the brunch is called Rhythm and Brunch, man. We out here. We going to have some fun. Man. Let's give it up again for Kev, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. One thing we know, none of us are here to judge, but it's it's not easy. A lot of that's why people in the comments you just, you gotta ignore it. To put your life on camera, it's it's easy for everybody else to dissect. I remember Craig got touched on that before when you're talking about putting life, you put your life on camera. Everybody's gonna have an opinion, so it, it takes a lot of courage to do that. 
You know what I'm saying? So we want to thank you for coming on. B12 on Instagram. B12 World on the B12 World. You want to sponsor the podcast, go to thecraigsmith.com. Uh, go to the contact page and fill in exactly what you're looking for. Uh, Show the only nigga that can eat pottery and not make a crunch sound. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, I, hey, Craig, the only nigga I know that got a stomach on his, uh, a tattoo on his stomach that say park in rear. I said, what? No, it wasn't wacky. This was too much. Hey, yeah, I know. I'm kind of faded, nigga. It's all good, nigga. <laughs> I got no more plugs after that. He's been on. He's, he's... Hey, it shows dreams. He's wearing a knee brace. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, that nigga got a, that nigga got that uh flannel shirt Ice Cube got beat up on in Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Go to sleep. Go to sleep, man. <laughs> Craig, get up, Craig. <laughs> Come on, Craig. I'm a man without, I'm a man without it. Come on, Craig. Come on, Craig. <laughs> Come on, Craig. Show me crutches on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nigga, oh, nigga, is stupid, yo. <laughs> hey, your granddaddy told me to pick him up, nigga, from the hospital because with no bitches on dialysis. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Nigga, your nose get wet every show time you take a shot. Show got arthritis and arth <laughs> leftist. <laughs> 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 Our leftists. Our leftists. That's fine. Right. That nigga, that nigga practiced uh, karma sutra on his uncles. <laughs> show, uh, show, show left LA and moved to Memphis to work in a liquor store. Niggas. <laughs> Hey, nigga, your auntie, hey, your, your auntie got a sugar daddy named Sugarfoot. <laughs> uh, everybody just say they shit. I think show roasted the fuck out of me. <laughs> Hell yeah, I did David Hasselhoff. Like <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 shout out, shout out Far Side TV, man. Uh, yeah, shout out to Brown, man. A lot of y'all don't know, man. Two very important people at the top of my list when it comes to Craig facts that have helped my career go a long way. Amen. It's Brandon and Brown. Amen. You feel me? Amen. I want to let them niggas know that I love them both. Mm. Brandon is is just as pig headed and as stubborn <laughs> as me, but he a good motherfucker, man. Amen. And, you know, I feel like we all going to get to the top together. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I know sometimes I be on bullshit. But just know, man, I got nothing but love from my heart, man. Thank yeah. both of you niggas for being there. I want to thank Dewan. I want to thank all you niggas, man. Shout out to Domino. We've been grinding this motherfucker for the last year and a half for basically nothing. Yeah. Just making just enough to pay for the shit. And, you know, we are passionate about being black. We're passionate about helping our people. And I appreciate y'all showing, you know, the appreciation. The little money I do get, I spend on trying to make the show better. So I want to let y'all know that, you know what I'm saying, I really appreciate the fans and everybody, man. Like, without you guys, this this ain't possible. It's a lot of shows that's doing, you know, bigger numbers because they are with bigger affiliates and stuff like that. But I love the way that this shit is going, man. So just know that every dollar y'all spend with anybody in this room subscribing to the Patreon or whatever you do. If you support me, I'm really put, retaining all that income and putting it right back into making this show better and create another content. You know Amen. Amen. So uh, much love and respect. If I owe you something, you can get it from God. Hey. Get it from God. You got a great God. Time, nigga. God, God, God. God, God. 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 God.